to order the October 7th, 2020 meeting of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals. Oh boy. <laughs> Larry, you wanna call roll? Is Larry here? Um, not sure if Larry's here, but I can go ahead and do that. Mary okay, Jackson, Jackie, we'll you can started. do that. <laughs> okay, so calling the meet meeting to order, uh, Vicki Sorensen. You're muted, You're on Vicky. mute. I'll come back to you. Bernie Gertas. I am here. William Hosea. Here. Margaret Clemens. Here. Mary Beth Kismarczyk. Here. Vicki Sorensen. Okay. Thumbs up. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, there you are. Great. All right. So we have four, uh, five members. You gonna do the introduction of evidence for us too, Jackie? Yes, and I do have just a couple of announcements as well, just since this is a fairly large agenda. Um, but let me go ahead and call, um, introduce the evidence for us, just a second. Okay. Monroe County Comprehensive Plan as adopted and, as, and amended, the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance as adopted and amended, the Monroe County Subdivision Control Ordinance as adopted and amended, the Board of Zoning Appeals Rules of Procedure as adopted and amended, and the cases advertised and scheduled for a hearing on tonight's agenda. And I'll go ahead and call the roll on that. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Mary Beth Kesmerger? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay. Okay. The evidence has been accepted. Did we do the approval of the agenda yet? Or do you want to make your announcement first? Um, I just want to make an announcement real quick, and I'll do this as we kind of get to the halfway point. Um, if it's okay by members, and I think we'll, it'll involve a vote, we'd like to propose that the petitioners have a total of five minutes to speak, and then any supporters or remonstrators have a total of three minutes to speak. I you want, a, you want a motion now? Sure. I move that we uh, enact the policy that Jackie just told us about for the time limits on the uh, petitioners and the public on the petitions. I second that motion. <laughs> All right, I'll call it to order then. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Mary Beth Kismarczyk? Yes, I was going to suggest the same thing. Bertie Gertas? Yes. Okay. Oh, Jack, Jackie, just yes. a word of explanation. Uh, that that uh, motion was prompted by the number of agenda items to be dealt with tonight. Yes. So it's an unusual circumstance. Yes, we have 17 agenda items. So that was a recommendation and it's with, yes. So and I'll, that, you know, sorry, go ahead, William. And only for this meeting? It's only for this meeting, yes. <laughs> And uh, just another housekeeping item is, um, so tech services said that they could do the timer. And then if you're not speaking, please keep your volume on mute. Um, and then as a case is presented, Mary Beth Kosmarczyk is on the screen and she's the chair. She will ask first for the planning staff to present and then ask the petitioner to present and then ask for any supporters or remonstrators. So at that time, uh, you may speak to the board and those time limits will be implemented. And please limit any and all discussions between the petitioner and the remonstrators or the petitioner and the supporters. This is a trying to get a full scope of what the request is and the conversation should be between the board and whoever is speaking, so. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, did we approve the agenda yet? No. 
Okay, I move we approve the agenda. I second. A second. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll call the roll and then I'll note that Larry Wilson is on so he can take it after this. So Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. William Hosea? You're on mute, William. Yes. Great. Uh, Mary Beth Kesmarcher? Yes. And Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay, and we're off. Administrative business, none. Old business. Uh, we have case number 2008 CDU-04. Drew? Thank you, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right, so this is the Dog Oasis Conditional Use Variance to Chapter 804. Uh, we heard this in last month's BZA meeting. Um, at that meeting, uh, the board members voted to continue the petition uh, to this meeting based on the need for more information regarding the access questions to Reeves, West Reeves Road to the petition site, as well as the need for more time to provide additional notice to nearby neighbors. Um, there was some discussion about neighbors not necessarily getting uh, notice letters, um, and I've been in contact with some of those neighbors um, with the rules of procedure with Board of Zoning Appeals meetings. Um, some of those neighbors fell outside of the um, criteria that we have to um, address and send letters to um, neighbors as notice. Um, so just quickly, uh, just gonna go a uh, refresher of this case. Um, it's a conditional use variance from chapter 804. It's the purpose is to operate a dog kennel slash boarding slash daycare facility located in the Agar zoning district on 14.33 acres. Um, chapter 802 states that the kennels are conditionally permitted in the Agar zone. Um, so this petition is for the full um, uh, definition of kennel as chapter 802 defines, um, but the Board of Zoning Appeals, um, you, the members are able to um, put any kind of conditions or limitations on that um, definition um, based upon um, the uh, cover letter that the petitioner submitted to the, uh, to the planning staff um, in the regard that um, they won't be really doing um, quite per se the same types of activities as the definition might entail um, for this petition. <clears throat> okay, so going over some more background, um, um, the petitioner's requested use will not utilize breeding or selling. Um, however, the conditional use request is the same, kind of like I said just a moment ago. Um, the petitioner could be subject to the limits of the use uh, in either a written commitment referencing the submitted cover letter or by what is approved explicitly in the site plan stage, if we come to that. Um, and any new structures or, or fencing over six feet in height would trigger the, that site plan uh, process. Um, again, day-to-day -day operations, according to the petitioner, uh, would be the hosting of five to 10 dogs on the property. Um, clients are scheduled to arrive between 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. and also 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, those are for drop-offs and pickups. All right, so um, here we have some photographs of the petition site. Um, it's located at 9606 West Reeves Road, excuse me. Um, so this is the view from the north. Um, not all the parcel lines are shown here. You can see this second home towards the middle of the uh, petition site. That is actually a separate parcel um, and is one of the neighbors. Uh, I believe that they will be on the call tonight. Um, <clears throat> so the, the structures to the, um, to the upper right corner, um, that's the, the existing single family residence for the petition site. Um, and then that long easement that extends up um, and off the screen um, that goes uh, to West Reeves Road. Um, the rest of the petition site, other than um, that that's, uh, middle home site is uh, the petition site. It's that 14.33 acres. Um, there's fencing on site um, and there's some existing structures as well. Um, so now we have some more photographs here, just kind of zooming in, getting a better idea of the layout of the petition site. Um, and then some photographs we included in the last meeting um, that shows that single family residence, the backyard of that single family residence. And in that bottom right photograph, you can see 
in the distance um, the white house that is the neighbor um, adjacent to them. More photographs of the gate and fenced area that goes um, onto the pasturage area that currently uh, hosts ghosts, goats, excuse me. Um, and there's also a small chicken coop here on the property. Um, and then just more photographs, just kind of giving an idea of the layout here. Another photograph of the petition site. Um, so <clears throat> the last meeting um, planning staff had had a recommendation of approval. Um, and then the day before um, that uh, meeting, the Monroe County Highway Department provided their recommendation and their assessment on the access and driveway for this petition site. Um, and based on that analysis of site distance um, and just traffic um, um, considerations uh, from the highway department, um, planning staff uh, felt obligated to switch their recommendation from approval to denial based on that finding. Um, and I have highlighted that finding here on this slide um, that is also included in the packet um, that talks about some of those um, assessments here um, and our ultimate conclusion of the proposed use does, does present an apparent dangerous, injurious or obnoxious condition based on the highway department's assessment. Um, on the next slide, I have that original um, highway department assessment um, that's also in the packet for you. Um, and then the photograph here on the right is a uh, photograph of that um, long stretch of parcel. Um, it's uh, a parcel itself that's owned by uh, the petition um, site owner, um, but it also acts as an easement um, for that um, neighbor that is landlocked. Um, and you can kind of see those parcel lines um, in the photograph here from the highway department's um, report. So yeah, there's that long um, stretch there. Um, here's a photograph that I created I'm trying to show you some of more of the of the West Reeves Road and the entrance to the petition site. Um, those distance numbers uh, measured in yellow, those are uh, the numbers that the Monroe County Highway Department provided. Um, so I kind of just tried to measure out what those look like. <clears throat> and then here are some pictures, uh, Google um, Street View. Um, this is from 2009. Um, so um, there's been some, quite some time since these photographs, um, but you can see here in the background um, a, a, a barn structure and then right before that is this driveway cut on the right and that is the entrance to uh, the petition site. And then the next photograph is coming from the opposite direction um, and you can slightly see the driveway cut to the left there. Um, again, these photographs are quite old, so likely some foliage has changed. Um, and I'm not sure, quite sure uh, about the road condition um, as it is represented here, um, but I thought that this would be useful. Um, another photograph, uh, aerial photograph, this is from 2020. Um, so you can really see how long the, that um, parcel easement is that gives access to the petition site. Okay, so um, here we have the uh, portions of the cover letter uh, that were submitted by the petitioner. Um, they are uh, also in your packet. Um, it talks about the general layout and idea for the business, um, the business practices that will be going on on the property, um, as well as uh, the next page, um, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, the next slide. Um, some letters of support for the petitioner as well. Um, these were submitted, uh, I believe, yesterday. Um, so these letters were not able to go into the packet uh, that went out, um, but I do want to spend some time on them. Um, there are four letters of support um, from uh, previous or current uh, clients of the petitioner, uh, and they talk about how her business practices are uh, above and beyond other uh, kennels in the area, as well as um, her attention to detail with taking care of the dogs, um, some of her credentials in veterinary work, as well as um, just being uh, uh, a really good advocate for, for these dogs um, and her kind of um, new technique into um, taking care of them um, when they are uh, a part of her pack, so to say. Um, additionally, uh, just like we had last meeting, there were some letters of remonstrance. These are those letters um, from the previous meeting. Um, essentially, these letters are 
questioning um, the business. Uh, um, they're worried about the noise of dogs. They're worried about dogs getting out. Um, they're also worried about access um, to the property. Um, this one was, this is a uh, remonstrance letter that was submitted after um, the past, um, the, the September meeting. Um, I believe this one is in the packet because it came in time. Um, so uh, I hope that you guys read through all of this stuff. Um, but this one also talks about how they're um, worried about the access point um, and other uh, concerns just in general about having a dog kennel use in the area. Um, this letter of remonstrance came in this afternoon, um, so it was not included in the packet. Um, this is a remonstrance letter from uh, the neighbor that is landlocked around the petition site. Um, she has been, she was uh, vocal in the last meeting uh, about her concerns and provided some um, uh, pictures of the access uh, and easement. Um, so uh, her main concerns in this, again, are about some of the business practices um, as well as um, the uh, issues, uh, potential issues with access and safety. Um, so those are some of the photographs that uh, this um, neighbor submitted in the last meeting. Um, just kind of a refresher, um, we can go back through any of these slides during our discussion of the petition um, if we see fit. Okay, so overall um, staff uh, had to change their recommendation to denial of the conditional use variance for kennel services uh, based on the findings of fact, specifically the finding that conditional use shall not involve any element or cause any condition that may be dangerous, injurious, or noxious to any other property or persons and shall comply with performance standards delineated in this ordinance. And that was primarily on the issue of the access in the Monroe County Highway Department's assessment. Um, should this conditional use variance receive approval, um, planning staff did have some recommendations if it were to go that way, um, and that is including one or more of the following conditions. Um, those conditions would be um, the petitioner submit a site plan that, compile, that complies excuse me, with the requirements of chapters 815 and all other applicable regulations contained in the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. Um, condition two, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals limit the scope of the dog kennel boarding or daycare conditional use to the maximum number of dogs the petitioner has stated in the cover letter. And also the petitioner agrees to improve um, the access road to a reasonable degree that enhances the safety of ingress, egress to the subject property. Again, these are just some ideas of what could be if um, the petition goes that way, um, but otherwise um, uh, planning staff has to recommend denial um, based on that uh, safety assessment for the access point. I will now take any questions. Ernie, go ahead. A couple questions. Uh, <clears throat> could you go back to the, the, the photo that shows the driveway tying into Reeves Road, the, the, the shows the length and the, the subject property? Okay, there, yeah, there you go. Okay, so in that photo, the, the driveway is actually on the property to the right of the petition site, is that correct? So the highlighted uh, parcel in pink, that is the petition site. Mm -hmm. um, the driveway extends off of that, the long easement drive extends along the rightmost property line and continues um, off screen to service the um, landlocked parcel that is the neighbor. Okay, and the driveway itself is owned by the, as we're looking at it, uh, is owned by the, the property the driveway is on is owned by the parcel to the right between Reeves Road and the drive. Um, the, the long um, easement driveway, um, that is actually owned by the uh, owner of the petition site. Okay. Um, they are um, in a purchase agreement with the petitioner in that if the uh, petition is approved, um, that that um, transfer of ownership would occur. Okay, okay. Uh, second, I've got, I think I've got three questions. The second question, uh, when you talk about the site distance that uh, the highway department looked at, that's for a commercial driveway permit, is that correct, Drew? 
Yes, I believe so. I think that's included in their assessment um, and recommendation document. And that's so I'll blend two questions together. So the, the driveway will have to be improved to a commercial standard. Is that correct for the site for a site plan review? I am not sure on that. Um, I would have to double check with the site plan standards because um, there's different standards of the site plan for commercial because um, it's there's some commercial you know uh, uses that are, are are very industrial or very high usage in nature, um, and then there's also these kinds of more home-based business types of uses um, that are also considered commercial. So there's a there's some wiggle room and some standards there. Okay, so is there any? Do you know if there's any way with the way the the driveway intersects Reeves Road? That a site that the site distance condition can be met. Sometimes trees can be removed. Sometimes a bank can be removed. Sometimes, I, I'm just curious if there's if they submit a site plan, will they be able to come up with an engineered design? In your opinion, because you're not looking at a site plan, and I understand and respect that. But <clears throat> was there any rec? Usually, usually when Ben or somebody goes out. And measures that off, they'll say with clearing, it looks like it can be attained. And I didn't see anything in there. Uh, is there any way that that site distance, do you believe, will be able to be met with a, with a, with a plan? Sure. Um, so in the highway park department's assessment, um, the requirement for site distance is 390 feet in both directions. Um, the site distance to the south is 389 feet. Mm -hmm. The site distance to the north is 227 feet. Mm -hmm. um, and those measurements, according to the highway department, do include clearing brush to the north and south for those site distance requirements. Um, so the south is just barely missing that distance requirement by one foot, um, according to the assessment. And then the northern um, access um, site line is a little bit more constrained. Um, I can't speak for. Um, the removal of a bank or anything like that, because I know mm -hmm. the highway department just basically said of clearing of brush. Um, and the 220, and I, the 226 feet is what they feel. I mean, I may, maybe I heard something that I didn't hear, but the 226.5 feet that they've got marked or that's marked, that is after clearing brush. That is after clearing brush, according yeah, okay. to the okay. highway department. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions for Drew? I do. Um, going back to the long driveway, Drew, did you say that uh, both parties own the driveway now and it would be given to one of them? I didn't understand that. Sure. Um, Jackie, if you could go to Elevate. I know that you had that pulled up a second ago. If it's not too much trouble. There we go. Um, okay, so the highlighted uh, parcels here, um, you can see the long um, um, easement driveway along with the petition site. Um, those two properties are currently owned by Mary Jones, as indicated um, below in the, in the table. Um, and that is going to be the transfer of ownership to the petitioner. Um, the small landlocked parcel in the middle, that is owned by uh, Ms. Rebecca Reed. Um, so, um, she doesn't own the, the, the driveway, but she does have a, an easement agreement for accessing that driveway. Um, and I included that easement documentation, um, in the, uh, uh, petition file, petition, um, packet. Is this going to cause a problem between the neighbors on the use of the drive? <laughs> there is been some, um, um, concern. Uh, raised for the use of the drive. Um, I believe that um, we have some measurements in the um, the petition report. Let me see if I can get to it one second. It's in one of the findings. I know that I have it here. One second. 
Okay, here we go. Um, so the access to the petition site is via a 25 foot wide by approximately 1,705 feet long flagpole piece of land. And that's the, the driveway uh, parcel um, that also services uh, the neighboring property at 9612 West Reeves Road. Um, but it appears currently that that driveway, the gravel drive doesn't extend um, that full uh, 25 feet. Um, and that is hence why um, in one of the recommendations, if approved, that there could be some sort of um, agreement or conversation about improving that driveway um, to allow more of a efficient traffic flow um, for this type of use. And then can I ask another question? Mm -hmm. um, going to transferring of the property uh, of the driveway, if the, uh, and I assume it was Jones, you said we get the property? Yes, so Mary Jones is the current owner of the petition site and the, um, the, that flagpole piece of land that is the driveway. She would so, transfer ownership to the petitioner who is Karen Sweeto. And is she willing to do that? Do you know? Which part? The improvement? Transfer, transfer ownership? Yes, they are. They're in a, a purchase agreement um, okay. right. to, yeah, contingent upon this, um, this petition. Anyone else have any questions for Drew? I'm not seeing anyone from the board, Mary Beth. Okay, thank you, Drew. Appreciate that. Is the petitioner is here and would they wish to speak? Hi, right, this is the petitioner, Karen Sweeto. Hey, Karen. All right. Um, you I have a the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Uh, you can proceed, please. Okay, um, I have a question before we begin the time, if I may. Okay. Um, at the last meeting, there were 30 to 45 minutes of remonstrance that I was blindsided by. And so my entire petition was postponed without everything being covered. I've spent the last month putting together this presentation. So it is very straightforward and to the point, there's just a lot of information necessary to sufficiently mitigate the concerns brought forth. I'm hoping that I may be granted some additional time to compensate for these unusual circumstances, at the very least to fully cover the concerns of the insufficient access since that is the only finding not in support. Um, since the planning department has not brought forth concerns of public nuisance or the quality of care, I guess I can leave those out in the interest of time. Okay. How much time does a petitioner typically, there's a restriction already in the, in the ordinance, isn't there, Dave? You're on mute, Dave. Dave, you're still muted. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't believe so. Um, I cannot remember if there's anything in the rules, but uh, I can check that real quickly. Dave, I looked at the rules today and there is not anything in the BCA yeah. rules relating to limiting speakers. Yeah. I believe there may be in the plan commission rules, however. Okay. That's, the, that's, that's what we're thinking of. Yeah. That's Thanks, what I was Larry. probably thinking of too. Okay. Okay. So what do you say? How much time do you think you need, Ms. Sweeto? Um, if I could have 15 minutes or so, I can get most of this covered. I'll talk really fast. It's all very straightforward and to the point. I would suggest uh, that we go 10 minutes because it is a unique situation, but Ms. Tweedo was back and, and she was continued for, for lack of information and she's got information to share. So I would suggest that we allow 10 minutes on this first petition uh, because it is a returning case. Okay. Additionally, the I would, I would, I'm me. sorry, I would just like to assert that 10 minutes is very generous. So let's not go over. Thank you. Okay. okay. And go. All right, so here we go. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Karen. Oh, I have a presentation, actually, um, a PowerPoint. Can I share my screen for that? 
I'm sorry, Karen, and unless you're the um, co-host, I don't know if you're able to share your screen at the at the meeting. Would, so if it's, is it vital that you have a shared screen? Um, it really helps defend my points. And I was told by the planning department that is something I would be able to do. So I put together something. I will give you temporary permissions to share. Thank okay, you, Michelle. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, so I am the founder, owner, operator, pack leader, and petitioner for Dog Oasis. The purpose of this presentation is to clarify my intentions, demonstrate the workability of my proposed use on the subject property, and prove my expertise, dedication, and flexibility in making the Dog Oasis dream come true. I will do so through personal anecdotes, candid photographs, community testimonials, and reputable published information. A good place to start is explaining that I am not trying to operate a run-of-the-mill commercial dog kennel. Instead, my overarching goal is to change the world for the better on behalf of the animals. Officially, Specializing this particular business is just one step in the grand scheme of achieving this monumental vision. And I've been taking these steps since I was a child. I have mastered my present positioning and currently the only thing I lack to continue the evolution is an appropriate facility. And that's why I'm here trying to do everything right by my community and right by the books. I get it. No one wants to live next to a quote unquote kennel. And I understand that not everything about this property is perfectly ideal for my intended use, but realistically settling on certain features of a property is an inevitable component of real estate. So any other viable option will also have aspects that are less than ideal, whether it be the driveway, incline, land size, the list goes on. I've been researching the market past and present Monroe County nationally since January of this year. And this property was the first available in the community worth pursuing. While it may not be perfectly ideal, in terms of zoning for the pack, it is everything we need, have dreamed of, and what the dogs deserve. We promise to be kind and considerate to our community and the land and to take care with all of our actions every day to ensure a harmonious relationship as we have since the beginning. To conclude this introduction, the only thing I ask of the board is that please, for the sake of the pack, our petition not be denied on the account of public opinions rashly drawn from incorrect assumptions about the character of my pack and me. On the other hand, I understand the importance of zoning for building a great community. So if it is to be, de de if it is to be denied because of zoning Thank you for your time and look forward to working with you in the future. Without further ado, um, so the first concern is in regards to the access and the issues that were brought forth included concerns of insufficient visibility from the access point, Reeves being a dangerous road and the access driveway being problematic. <clears throat> According to the planning department, the highway department's recommendation the Highway Department's comments are essentially a recommendation to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and although the majority of findings are in support, planning staff is obligated to recommend denial of a petition when at least one finding proves unsupportive of a petition proves unsupportive. Since the only departmental findings not in support are related to the access, I figured it was worth pursuing. When formulating my rebuttals and potential solutions, I kept in mind the objectives of the county to ensure the proposed use does not present an apparent dangerous, injurious, or noxious condition and shall organize vehicular access and parking to minimize traffic congestion in the neighborhood. So the most crucial barrier is out of insufficient visibility, particularly to the north. Generally speaking, there are many roads in the county, let alone the world, with insufficient visibility. But for the purpose of pertinence, I've compiled evidence from three local commercial animal establishments with similar visibility issues. In the interest of time, I will present one and I can send the others to the planning department. Um, that's dog boarding. Dog Kennel boarding and training in the Agricultural Rural Reserve Zoning District is a six minute drive southeast from the petition property. It has 20 kennels, so comparable client traffic, and the driveway is similar in length to that of the petition property. And visibility to the south is poor due to a dip in the road over a hill. So insufficient. Uh, so insufficient visibility is a common issue. How, however, there are a variety of options for mitigation. Clearing brush would increase visibility all around and was recommended by the highway department. Installing traffic mirrors would increase visibility in both directions for drivers on the road and for the ingress and egress of the driveways on the road. Installing road and traffic warning signs have um, I quote, proven safety benefits and are effective at reducing crash rates and severity according to the crash modification factors clearing house, which is an organization funded by the US Department of Transportation Federal Highway Administration with the purpose of compiling all documented CMFs in a central location. 
if the county finds it necessary to um, enhance the safety of ingress and egress of the subject property, installing a no left turn sign for clients egressing the petition driveway will prohibit them from pulling out in front of anyone coming from the area of low visibility. According to Google Maps, is it, a five to six, it is a five to six minute drive in either direction to get back to West State Road 46. Moreover, the no, no left turns rule could be designated for a certain time frame specifically to mitigate rush hour concerns. And according to the highway department, account can be conducted to determine the appropriate time frames. The next point of contention regards access, um, re in regards to the access is that Reeves Road is a dangerous road. It was cited by the highway department that there have been eight crashes in the last four years, but what wasn't mentioned was that the statistic is for the entirety of Reeves Road. Only one incident was in the vicinity of the petition driveway, but according to the sheriff's department, it was unrelated because it was an OWI. Additionally, it is not classified as a crash since no other vehicles or persons were involved in the incident, and I have a copy of the accident report I can send to the planning committee. It was stated that Reeves has a crazy and intense rush hour with enough traffic due to it due to it being a route between towns. However, no data was provided to attest to the craziness. Um, and according to the highway department, the last traffic count was done in 2006, but a lot has changed since then, making it outdated. Regardless, because convenience is a major factor of client acquisition in general, and specifically for my business, it can be reasonably assumed that many of my new clients would be those who already use that road for commute, and therefore they would not add to the traffic and they would already be familiar with the road's conditions. Additionally, not every dog is dropped off and picked up every day, so the traffic would only be a fraction of the total number of dogs. There is a school bus that drops students and turns around to the west across the street and slightly north from the petition act petition driveway access point. So it would take merely seconds or minutes for the bus to drive to another location to turn around. It can reasonably be concluded that either this is the safest place, it's safe enough, or it's not that unsafe to begin with. This speaks to the safety of the access point of the petition site because of the proximity. Furthermore, if the county finds it necessary so my business does not pose a risk to the students and the public, I am willing to prohibit client drop off and pickup for a time frame of approximately 10 minutes when the bus is scheduled to be in the area. According to the Richland Bean Blossom Transportation Services, students must be ready, I quote, five to 10 minutes before the expected pickup time and the service is only occasionally early or late. Reeves Road was fully asphalted within the last month from Starnes to Country Line Road. According to the National Asphalt Pavement Association, an organization that works to improve all aspects of asphalting, I quote, well-maintained asphalt has been proven to reduce traffic accidents and related fatalities. Um, additionally, the Bloomington Monroe County Metropolitan Planning Organization included plans to further enhance the rest of Reeves Road from State Road 46 to Starnes Road in their 2035 long range transportation plan adopted in 2015. We are willing to pave a portion of the bottom of the driveway if the county finds it to be a necessary measure to enhance the safety of the ingress egress of the subject property. However, this seems futile since the bottom portion of the driveway is completely level with the main road and gravel provides more traction than asphalt, especially in inclement weather. Um, Along with all of this, clients will be given detailed instructions for drop-off and pickup to ensure proposed use does not present an apparent dangerous injurious or noxious condition and that vehicular access and parking are organized to minimize traffic congestion in the neighborhood. There will be a two strike system, one strike to accommodate mistakes and misunderstandings after which they will be required to be retrained on the rules. After a second strike, the individual who committed the repeat offense will no longer be permitted to drive on the premises, but so as not to punish the innocent dog, they may, they may employ a friend, family, or someone hired to conduct drop-off and pickup. Every individual must go through drop off and pickup training. To set up this point, if Reeves Road is as dangerous as purported, it begs the question why more immediate action hasn't been taken to mitigate the risks. And regardless if my business is permitted, action should be taken on behalf of the safety of the community. The solutions I presented would not only make it safer for my business, but for everyone on the road. Last point of contention in regards to the insufficient access is that inclement weather can cause a driveway to become problematic. Um, first, I would like to point out that the drivability is not a problem outside of inclement weather, and there will be a plan for safely and efficiently dealing with uh, said weather, which I will detail here shortly. The current homeowners can attest that FedEx, UPS, USPS, and Amazon all use the driveway to deliver right to the house of the petition property, right on the doorstep. Personally, acquaint Acquaintances, clients, and I have driven a variety of vehicles up and down without issue. The current homeowners attest that they have not had the issues that with the easement has had. They do not live by the weather. They have never been snowed in. Um, 
not just the first person makes it out after snow. It's not a bobsled run for them. Ice is not a problem. And they only had one instance where they needed a tow, but that is negated by the fact that it was their first year of residence. It was due to human error and they've not had an issue since. Theoretically, it would be better for a business to be in charge of the driveway than an individual because a business will prioritize maintenance more than an individual who does not have comparable immediate motivation. Furthermore, the national trend since 1970 has been warmer and therefore less inclement winters, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the National Centers for Environmental Information, both science based seconds. Agencies. Um, they recommend not plowing. Um, I have uh, detailed plans for handling the inclement weather and that basically covers the access at least. Thank you, Karen. Does the board have questions for Karen? Anybody have a question for Karen on the board? Thank you very much, Karen. That was a uh, well thought out and well put together. We Thank appreciate you. There's a lot more where that came from. Um, it's, I'm sorry we don't get to go over it all, but thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of the petition? Anyone here wants to speak on behalf of the petition? If anyone wants to speak in support, I believe that they will have to um, either raise their hand in the participants or um, tech services. Can they unmute themselves? Yes. Okay, you can unmute if you wish to speak in support. Are we seeing any? No. Okay. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak against the petition? No one? I'm not seeing anyone. Drew, you're on mute. I see one. Um, Rebecca Reed. Oh, hand raised. Okay, mm -hmm. Rebecca. Um, Rebecca, can I swear you in, please? Rebecca, we can't hear you. Rebecca, did you wish to speak against the petition? Tech services, do you know if Rebecca is connected to audio? Uh, looking for the name right now. Okay, it's under Rebecca Reed. Uh, they do not currently have audio enabled. Yeah, so Rebecca, um, we'll, we'll come back to you if you can get audio connected at some point, or um, you can call in as well. Uh, I'll put the number to call into in the chat. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak against the petition? Can I speak for the petitioner? Well, yeah. we actually had already asked for that, but... I'm sorry, I just thought we had a little time. I'm a petitioner's father, and I just wanted to emphasize that her... Sir, I need to swear you in, actually. Okay, okay. Can you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, go ahead, sir. I just wanted to emphasize uh, Karen's point about the no left turn. I'm not sure if that's clear. The lack of visibility is to the right as you leave the driveway, but if you prohibit any left turns going out of the driveway, that would seem to eliminate any danger from the lack of visibility to the right of the driveway. So I just wanted to make that clear that everybody understands what we're talking about there. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Any questions for? No. Do we have? So um, tech services put the number into the chat, but um, if Rebecca Reed wants to call, the number is 312-626-6799, and you'll be asked to put in a meeting ID, which is 847-1935. Four nine seven six, 
and if needed, passcode 527011, and that's for anyone on, on CATS as well. Uh, I have one question. Is Jackie, uh, Jackie, is uh, Highway present? Is a member of the Highway Department present? That's a good question, Margaret. Um, I do not believe anyone from the Highway Department is present tonight. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I believe one other person was um, trying to I, speak. My name is Christina Welsh. Is it okay if I speak? Are you in support or uh, um, it's in support? Sure. Do uh, you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Go ahead. Um, I am a family friend of the Sweetos, and I have experience uh, being around Karen when she has multiple dogs. Um, upward of 12 and 13 dogs. And I know for a lot of people, there is a concern about um, the noise level and the behavior of the dogs. And had I not been a witness to how she handles the dogs myself, and I think if you read some of the reviews from her clients, you'll see the same thing. It would have been in my head, the, the barking and the noise that you would get at a typical kennel or a shelter where the dogs are in cages and bored and anxious and just barking the whole time. Um, and I just want to attest to the fact that yes, there is barking, there are animals, but it is not a constant ongoing barking. Um, her methods are amazing. You can see in one of the pictures she shared, there's a whole line of dogs walking um, in a row. She has um, an incredible ability with the pack. They learn very quickly and um, you see her with dogs like that all of the time, walking in a row or walking beside each other. So I just want to assure anyone who is concerned about noise level or behavior of the dogs, dogs running off, um, that I think some of those images most of us would have in our head um, aren't really an issue with, with Karen's methods and her experience with animals. Um, that's all. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Hello? Hello? Yes, is this Rebecca? Yes, it is. I'm sorry for the problem. That's okay. okay, please state your name. Rebecca Reed. And you will be speaking on behalf uh, or against the petition, is that correct? Against, yes. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right, you may start. Well, I have a few questions, I guess. Um, there's not been any mention of the water situation. We have a well. They have a well on their property um, that we have water rights to. Uh, they're in the deed recorded. And I might add that the easement to the driveway was been transferred in deeds since 1970 to our property also. Um, I wanted to know what the plan was, if they had a plan as far as going on rural water. Can I laugh at you? Uh, Jackie? Yes. If you wanna pause that for a second. Uh, we would like you to testify as to what you have against the petition. And okay. I think the well water is exactly uh, anything that is brought into our, am I wrong here, Jackie? No, sorry, hold on. I'm kind of confused. I, it, this is not really the time for the petitioner to be asking questions of anyone. Right, no, so um, Rebecca, this will be a time period where you are describing your remonstrance to this use and okay. this case. And so any questions you have specific for the petitioner that will be something that you and um, that petitioner could work out and the water rights would be something outside of planning and zoning authority. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. Proceed. Okay, thank you. Yes, I sure will. Um, the road that we've talked about, Reeves Road, as far as, uh, and Karen did a good presentation, but there is, you know, incredible fluctuations in the elevation and it's kind of a, um, an S curve. If you see on the uh, any of the Google Maps, you can see from an overhead that it's an S curve that is uh, has been problematic in the past, and the speeds 
and I don't know. I wrote it in my uh, my letter, uh, but I it is marked now since it's been blacktopped from Ellsville and uh, from about Gilmore. It's it's marked at forty, not thirty five, and I believe that changes the site uh, distance and some. Um, from the other direction, it's it's fairly wicked. It's uh, you, the speed limit is lower, but it is quite odd right there. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that, uh, you know, there are several uh, sinkholes in the general area. In fact, uh, the adjoining properties, I can't speak for Karst Farms, uh, but uh, Mike Ball and Martha Ball's property, uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Tilly's property, uh, I know of the Abbott's have seen them and they're also on our property and 9606 also uh, dry streams on the driveway uh, that go into ravines and uh, also think of down on the Abbott's property. So it is a fairly karst uh, general area in uh, the slopes and the stone uh, and the sinkholes that develop. So that's another concern that I had. As far as the deers come across the dry stream, so I mean, it is affected more than just uh, ingress and egress that way. So I guess if we can't discuss the water, that kind of eliminates that one. Um, I guess maybe I, I'll just let uh, my letter speak for itself and... Uh, that's all that I'll say, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Thank, Thank you, you Miss Reed. Does anyone have any questions for Miss Reed? Uh, this is the petitioner, Karen Sweeto. No, it would be, I'm sorry, Karen. It would be, do any board members have any questions for Miss Reed? Apologies. No worries. No board members have any members? Any questions? Not seeing any, Mary Beth. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here that wishes to speak against the petition? Seeing anybody? No. Okay. Uh, would anybody be ready to make a motion on this petition? Excuse me. Could I want to say one more thing? Ma'am, uh, I think that put time's passed. Your time was up. Okay, Thank you, Ms. Reed. Thank you. No problem. Anybody here would like to make, would one of the board members like to make a motion, please? Okay. I'm in the, uh, In the matter of, um, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble finding my case number here. Um, case number 2008-CDU-04. Yes, um, I would uh, make a recommendation that we deny the conditional use variance for kennel services, chapter 813, based on the findings of fact Specifically, finding E, the conditional use shall not involve any element or cause any condition that may be dangerous, injurious, or noxious to any other property or persons and shall comply with performance standards delineated in this ordinance. Second. Okay, you want to call the roll? Larry? Somebody? You're on mute, Larry. That was a motion to approve bait with the conditions. Is that correct? It was a motion to deny. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion is to deny uh, based upon the, the review, but based upon the findings from the planning department. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to deny the petition. Barbara Clements? Yes. Brady Garitas? I just real quick like to say that I think Miss Sweeto is probably an ideal person to have this type of business, but it's it's just not in the proper location. And I am truly hung up on the 
highway department's recommendation based on the, the site distance and the condition of the of the driveway. If there was a way to get that worked out affirmatively and a site plan could be proven that it could work, then uh, I might be swayed, but uh, yes. William Hosea? Yes. Very best, Kim Harchuk. No. Okay, Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Okay, the uh, petition for the conditional use is denied by a four to one margin. I'm sorry, Ms. Sweeto. You have a good evening. Okay, next up we have case number 2008-53. Tammy, uh, I believe this one's yours. Yep, let's make this one a quick one. It's uh, a 2.94 acre lot in Richland Township, section 18. It's located at 1955 West Ratliff Road. It is zoned agrural reserve, which requires a 200 foot lot width and the deed states that this is a 172 foot wide uh, parcel, which is just shy of even being able to administer a waiver, which, which comes in at 180. So we're eight feet shy and that is why we're here. Uh, the slope map there in the bottom right shows that there is floodplain on the property. We did go to the Indiana floodplain information portal and confirmed that where the petitioner would like to have a garage is outside of the floodplain area. So they're good on that front. Um, there's an old barn that's in the floodplain, but it's, it's grandfathered as is. Uh, and I think the purpose of this new garage is to kind of get some of those things out of the barn and into the new. Next. These are just two of the site photos. The bottom photo shows a truck. That's roughly where the new garage will be going. It's 18 feet off of the property line. So it does meet all other buildable area standards and design standards. Petitioner's letter, the petitioner's site plan. Uh, I highlighted in blue where their new um, pole, bar, pole barn will be going. It's 30 by 40, uh, located 11 feet from the house and will not be on top of the septic system or anything. So what we're running into is just that eight foot slightly off on the width of the lot. Recommendation for petition 2008-VAR-53 is to approve the design standards variance to chapter 804 minimum lot width based on findings of fact. All right, thank you. Is there any questions for staff? Seeing none. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? You do not have to if you don't want to. I was looking for the petitioner. I'm not sure if they are or not. I don't see anyone. It would be Chad Walden. Um, can you hear me? Great. Yes, we yes. can hear Hello? you. Did you wish to speak, Chad? No, I don't wish to speak. I'm, I'm here though. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, is, is there anyone here that you wish just to speak in favor of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? Seeing none, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Uh, number 2008-VAR-53. Uh, request for design standards variance chapter 804 minimum lot width at 9155 West Ratliff Road. I make a motion that we approve the petition. I second the motion. Please call roll. Okay, the voice on petition number 2008 ER 53, the Walden minimum lot size lot area width variance of vote. In favor is a vote to approve the variance based upon the findings of fact. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mayor Biscuit Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mark Clemens? Yes. Variance is approved by a 5 to 0 vote. Thank you very much, Mr. Walden. Enjoy your new barn. Next case. Thank you very much. Next case up is case number numbers 
2008-VAR-54 minimum lot area acres, case number 2008-VAR-55 minimum lot width, and 2008-VAR-55A side yard setback. Rebecca? Thanks, Mary Beth. So this petition uh, is a request for three variances. Uh, next slide, Jackie. The petition site is located at 8484 West Chafin Chapel Road um, in Bean Blossom Township, and that's section 32, and contains about uh, 0.93 acres. Uh, the site's currently zoned Ag RR. Uh, the comp plan has this site designated as rural residential. Uh, there is some slope on the property, but none is impacted by the proposed uh, uh, projects here. Um, here we have some site photos. On the left is a bird's eye view of the parcel. And on the right is a picture of uh, the garage um, that is being, uh, they are wanting to expand this garage. Um, and so that is originally what sort of uh, uh, brought in the need for a variance um, because they are not quite meeting the minimum lot area or minimum lot width for this, uh, for the zone that they're in. And then when we were out on site um, taking photos, realized that there is also uh, an existing carport, which is just to the left of the garage in the photo on the right here. And so um, that actually is uh, encroaching on the side yard setback. Um, so that is, the, that is the structure that is uh, kicking in the need for a side yard setback variance. Next slide. Uh, photos again um, on the left is a photograph looking towards the back of the carport. Um, and I included this photo because you can see uh, that the petitioner's neighbor <laughs> has also built um, right up to the property line. Uh, and then the photo on the right is a just an illustration of the existing garage and a carport and um, off the back of the garage is where the expansion is planned. Next photo. Here we have the site plan on the left. Um, and again, just to clarify, uh, the, the garage expansion was the item that kicked in the need um, for the lot size and width. And then upon investigation, we realized um, that the carport there indicated in the green is sitting in the setback and will need a side yard setback. Um, and then on the right here in this slide, we've got the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so uh, summary here, so this is three uh, point three this has three requests, uh, one from minimum lot area, one from minimum lot width, and then the side yard setback um, related to the existing carport. And recommended motion, uh, approve the design standards variance request from the minimum lot area requirement in chapter 804 approve the design standards variance request from the minimum lot width requirement in chapter 804 and approve the design standards variance request from the side yard setback requirement in chapter 804 of the Monroe County uh, zoning ordinance. Any questions for staff? No questions for staff? I, I do have a question, Mary Beth. Okay. Um, one of the things that just came to my mind when you were showing that the two structures would be close together, is there any ruling that uh, for fire protection that they that structures can only be so close together? It says there's a big, been a big fire here in my addition of three houses that were too close together and they all caught on fire. Uh, I you know unfortunately I don't I'm not a, I don't know what the fire codes state. Um, okay. There, there are building code requirements in regard to that uh, based upon the type of construction and the type of uses. 
Okay, uh, okay. And, um, and, Vic, yeah. and Vicky, I'd like to say related, um, we talked about repositioning the carport, but it just didn't make sense to go anywhere else on the lot because of septic constraints. Okay. Um, so we did, right. we did try to consider other locations. All right, thank you. Typically, Vicki, I think it is an eight foot separation distance. And Rebecca, just to clarify, is this an after the fact permit for the carport? Correct, it is. Okay, so it was put in without a permit and now this is rectifying it. Okay. Correct. Okay, any further questions for staff? They'll, they'll still have to get a, they'll still have to get a building permit though after the fact, is that correct? Yes, they will, Marie. So there's, if there's any issues with the building department, then we can't supersede the building department's requirement unless we would put that in the motion. Is that correct? Which wouldn't happen, but we, just yeah, we can't supersede them. No, right. Okay. Right. So if, if the building department doesn't issue it, then it, it's dead anyway. Yes. Yeah. I can All make right. a motion. Uh, did we want to like ask the petitioner if they want to speak first? Sorry. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm, Bernie. Sorry, uh, Madam Chairperson. It's okay. Uh, is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? So uh, this is Mike and Anna. Um, I just appreciate, oh, what did I do? Did, did you want to speak? Sure. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Now you can go ahead. Thank you. So um, the main thing is, is uh, like I said, we we are looking to add on to our garage for the fact that we are running out of um, space uh, for our personal items, such as uh, four wheelers and stuff like that, a boat. Um, we just don't feel like leaving it outside. And as far as the carport, um, I'll be the first to apologize. And I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus that could also be on this that I don't know of. But when we bought our carport, uh, the company that we bought it, a local company, said because it is um, uh, uh, able to be moved and it's not considered permanent, that we did not have to have a permit. So that's kind of why that was brought up when um, when Rachel and Anna started talking to um, do all that. So um, it wasn't that I was trying to hide anything or or look passed a law we just didn't know anything about that so um needless to say um she did talk about our neighbor i mean their garage was built and i i'm assuming it was built without a permit years ago um, but it's you know pretty close to our property line which is kind of close to our carport so all of this is just an improvement for our livelihoods and um and the aesthetics of our property so i appreciate everyone and thank you very much Okay, anyone have any questions? Does any board member have any questions for the petitioner? All right, seeing none. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of the petition? I'm not seeing anyone, Mary Beth. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against the petition? Now, <laughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> with respect to cases numbered 2008 dash VAR dash 54 minimum lot area parentheses acres, 2008 dash VAR dash 55 minimum lot width, 2008 dash VAR dash 55A side yard setback. Request for the design st standards variance for minimum lot area requirements, cha chapter 804, design standards variance for minimum lot width requirements, chapter 804, side yard setback variance from chapter 804 and 8484 West Chafin Chapel Road. I move that we approve the variance based on the findings in the report and staff's recommendations. Second. Call the roll, Larry. Okay, the voters on petition. Oh, okay, the voters on petition 2008 54, 55, and 55A, the hump, hump minimum lot area, minimum lot width, and side yard setback, respectively. A vote in the favor is a vote to approve all three development standards variances. Uh, William Hosea? 
Yes. Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Barbara Clemens? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Okay. All variances are approved by a five to zero vote. Thank you so much, and you have a good evening. Thank you all. Next up, we have case number 2008-VAR-56-57. Drew? Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Okay, this is the uh, case number 2008-VAR-56-57, Groschwitz minimum lot size variance and minimum lot width variance to Chapter 804. That's located at 1491 East Sample Road and it is zoned Agricultural Rural Reserve. Okay, so a little bit of summary here. The petitioner requests two design standards variances, Chapter 804, in order to conduct a, a major renovation slash addition to the existing single family residence. The petition site contains an approximately 1,248 square foot single family residence and a 576 square foot detached garage. The petitioner's building permit application for a remodel and addition was received by the Monroe County Building Department in, in July 16th, 2020. And upon planning staff's review of that application, it was found that the petition site does not meet the minimum lot size and minimum lot width requirements for the agricultural rural reserve zone. So the current uh, size of the petition site is 0.83 acres and the required is 2.5 acres and the minimum lot width is 160 feet, and the requirement is 200 feet. Um, if you did your own research under this property, you will notice that the uh, Elevate GIS parcel lines do not appear correctly. I wanna make that note. Um, exhibit two in the uh, petition report um, gives a better accurate de description of that um, lot. Um, so a lot of these maps here are created um, are not depicting the parcel correctly, um, but we're gonna go ahead and go along with them. Um, so here's the location map. It's at 1491 East Sample Road. Um, the current zoning is Agricultural Rural Reserve. Comprehensive plan has it designated as farm and forest. Um, so here in the site conditions map, I kind of um, geo-referenced the uh, survey document that was provided by the petitioner and drew my own parcel lines on there to give you a better idea of what the parcel looks like um, for this presentation. Um, so um, those were those two pictures. Uh, parcel size map, I did the same here. Um, so that parcel highlighted in red is the petition site and the green parcels are other parcels in the area that are zoned agricultural rural reserve and also do not meet the minimum lot size. Um, here we have some pictures of the petition site, uh, an aerial photograph of the existing single family residence and detached garage. Um, the property next door um, is uh, also owned by the petitioner. It is for their uh, business, which is uh, Applied Canine Behaviors, I believe is the name of the business. And they do dog trainings and dog sittings um, and those types of uses. Here we have some photographs of the driveway um, cut as well as East Sample Road. And here's some photographs of the petition site, the driveway again, you can see the detached garage there, as well as some different angles of the existing single family residence. Here we have the petitioner's submitted letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals, um, stating their intent to do a renovation in addition to the existing residential structure. Um, <clears throat> They also, um, it should be noted that this petition site was a little bit larger in size um, prior to some right-of-way dedication as part of the Monroe County Highway Department's plans to uh, expand on East Sample Road. Um, that previous size showed here on this survey plat was 1.19 acres, um, but that wouldn't have met the minimum requirement either, um, but since the right-of-way dedication has occurred, um, that size has gone down to 0.83 acres. Um, here is a excerpt from their submitted uh, construction plans and site plan. Um, this one just kind of shows uh, a general uh, architectural plan um, for the petition site. 
Um, more of these uh, plans um, that you can see here as well are included in the petition report. Um, if you want to go through those and look at the general um, uh, construction plan for the project. Um, overall, um, all other design standards other than the minimum lot size and minimum lot width will be met um, in the improvement location permit application process. So overall, planning staff recommends uh, approval of both design standards variances to Chapter 804, that is for minimum lot size and minimum lot width based on the findings of fact and subject to Monroe County Highway and drainage engineer reports. I will now take any questions. Any questions? Hi, Drew. This is um, Margaret, and I just, um, you said that the property owner owns the lot next door as well. Would the problem be resolved and stay within the code if the two properties were merged into one? I do not believe so because that other property is under a different use. Um, they have a um, their business use on there. Um, so if you were to start combining properties, um, that that there would be an issue of overlapping use of residential and um, um, their current um, operating use. But this is a significant uh, uh, variation from the minimum lot size and the minimum lot width that could be averted should the um, two lots be combined. I mean, that's a, that's more than, you know, than, uh, that's less than 50%, you know, of the minimum lot size. So I'm just, I'm just kind of having a hard time uh, seeing how this is the appropriate solution, but, um, maybe some other members of the board of zoning appeals would be able to weigh in on that. I do understand the difficulties at combining the properties, especially if one's separate, it is one's the business and one is their primary residence. That uh, makes it difficult on a lot of different levels. Any other questions for Drew? Or anybody on the board can address Margaret's questions? Yeah. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Hello, this is Sandra Groshwitz. I don't think- Sandra? You know. Sandra? Yes. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Yes, this is Sandra Groshwitz. I, I don't think so. You don't wish to speak? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to. Thank you, Sandra. Is there anybody else here that would like to speak on behalf of the petition? Anyone else, anyone here would like to speak against the petition? Not hearing anything. Uh, can one of the, the, would like one of the board members have more questions or would you like to make a motion? I concur with what you're saying, Mary Beth, about combining the parcels. I, I think that there are two uses in the right of way dedication seems to be a fairly significant part of what they're talking about. So I can go ahead and make a motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, if, with respect to case number 2008-VAR-56-57, request as a design standard variance one, uh, the 56 position, minimum lot size of chapter 804, uh, the 57 position petition is the minimum lot width of chapter 804 at 1491 East Sample Road. I move that we approve the variance for all for, for both variances uh, based on the staff report and the findings contained within the recommendations by staff and highway department. <clears throat> Second. Hey, I'll call the roll now. The vote uh, motion was to approve both variances, the lot area variance and the uh, lot width variance uh, for petition 2008 vr 5657 Girl Switch uh, variance petition. A vote in a fa favor is a vote to approve both the lots area and the lot width variance. Uh, 
Rivith Kismarchuk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mara Clements? No. Okay. Bertie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Variance is approved by a four to one vote. Thank you so very much. You have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, case number 2008-VAR-58 and 2008-VAR-59. Gammy? Great. This is um, a one. This is a one lot that is 0.46 acres in size in Bloomington Township, Section 16, located at 4416 North Thistle Drive. You could go with the slide. It's um, just located north of Griffey Lake, uh, Griffey Reservoir there in the Marlin Hills subdivision. It is zoned RE1. And usually a lot size in that area is one acre. Uh, because this is the former fringe, they do not have to meet minimum lot requirements. There's a caveat within chapter 833 that, that bypasses that. Um, but the petitioners are asking for two other variances with um, a pole barn that they are wishing to erect on site. Uh, the comprehensive plan has it as, I believe, conservation residential. And the slope map, so this site, it is 0.46 acres in size. Um, it's relatively flat. It does gently slope to the south end east of the property and it's a corner lot. So it does have two front yards and then two side yards, um, which is kind of how we deal with, with corner lots. Um, next, this is the petitioner's site plan. So the request is for them to build uh, that blue rectangle said proposed building. It is basically a 28 by 34 uh, pole barn with a lean-to enclosed in it. It's, so that makes it 952 square foot of um, storage space that they would like to house a boat in. So one of the variances is that by adding this structure to the property, it exceeds the maximum building coverage um, by 494 square feet. So in this zone, they only are allowed to have a 20% maximum building coverage. And by adding this structure, it bumps it up to 22.46% building coverage, um, which is not too far off. Something I want to note in the site plan here is the septic system that they have drawn on this map. And then they also do have a utility easement drawn in yellow along that is in the plat um, and it's on the east side of the property. Uh, the petitioners are currently not requesting a separate driveway entrance to to access this building, it would just be along that um, green little path that they have designated there. Uh, one other thing I will say is that they are requesting to encroach 28 feet into their 30 foot setback. So the entire structure would be in the setback. I'll have a different photo that um, depicts that in a second. Right, so in Marlin Hills subdivision, this subdivision is platted with a 60 foot right of way, which is uh, shown in yellow on the map. So basically the petitioner needs to meet that 30 foot right of way from the center line of the road. And then the plat also designates a 30 foot setback from right of way. Um, not all local roads have to abide by this, but this platted subdivision, uh, this is the character of the area to have the homes a little bit farther set back from the roadway. So. Uh, technically, they should be 60 feet from the center line of the road, and that's adding both the right of way and the required setback. Um, in this case, th they are fully encroaching 100% into the front setback and requesting to be just two feet off of the right of way. One other thing I'd like to explain is that um, they're lot one in the Marlin Hill subdivision, and then there's another plat just to the east of them where the red square is on the map that starts. Um, the right of ways are platted differently. There's a drastic um, difference here and the road design is drastically different uh, 
different in that we're <coughs> next to the petitioner's site, it's a 28 foot wide road, and then it suddenly bumps down to a 16 foot wide road. Um, so it is a little tricky when you're driving through there uh, to suddenly have to slow down. And it's just something that I thought was interesting that's right next to the petition site. So the upper picture on the right hand side, just on the other side of the fence is where their structure is proposed to go. And then the bottom picture is showing where we have this road change from 28 feet to 16 feet with that transition there. Um, this is the upper picture is looking west down North Audubon Drive. And also the bottom picture is uh, looking west down North Audubon Drive, but kind of more in, uh, capturing the petitioner's home and where they would locate this structure. You can kind of see the boat in the background. You can also see the boat up here in the foreground, in the upper picture, which is what they would like to store in the site. Uh, and then the bottom picture is um, somewhere in there is their septic field and their septic system, which was built in 1955. Um, these are a couple of aerial shots. So all in all, when staff was doing some analysis about setbacks in the area, uh, the character of the area, um, most of those houses are all meeting the setbacks required. Um, there were, there were a handful that were encroaching um, five feet in some cases with their house. Uh, and then we have one, one uh, just to the south of the, the petition site that has a 10 foot encroachment with um, that covered like pull through on the driveway. Uh, next picture, again, this is the Marlin Hills subdivision. So this is the petitioner's letter with the request. Also the, um, site map I've put in there once more time. And then the Marlin Hills subdivision showing these um, very uniform cladded lots. And these are all on septic system at this point in time. Uh, in the right hand side, you can see that um, the petition is lot number one. And we're seeing that transition of right of way dedication between the Marlin Hills subdivision and North Cliff. Uh, I did have the highway department take a look at this and they were mostly looking at it from a, uh, a vision, like a sight distance standpoint. And they did some calculations and did not think that sight distance at the intersection of um, Audubon and Thistle would be impeded by having the structure as close as it is being two feet off of the right of way. And then I also started thinking about the septic system because um, I did call the health department, I reached out to the health department. They have no records of the septic field, septic system, anything on file because um, I think of the age of this subdivision. Uh, I talked to the petitioners about what they knew about the septic system, uh, trying to get a little bit more information, which was still to me felt fairly vague. And then I went back to the health department and talked to them extensively about um, maybe you know, should it be damaged during the construction of the structure? Like, what does it take to um, maybe repair the system? And, and so uh, they said they should definitely have a repair permit on file in case something does go wrong during construction, if, if it leads to that. Uh, that really the only way to know where a septic field is, is to do um, some ground penetrating radar studies and you know, if they go on with this project, they should be prepared to also put in a, a brand new Presby system should there be some sort of damage to the system um, because it's just not sure where, where it is. Um, so we did have some remonstrance for this case. Once uh, staff had completed, completed their report and I think only one letter made it in to the packet just it came in like the day we were publishing. I also did get a phone call from a concerned neighbor. Uh, she had concerns about the size um, of the structure and the business motives that were maybe going to take place in there. She thought it would be great to have an affidavit on file to make sure that it's for non-business use. Um, and then I also had another uh, petition, uh, neighbor that was emailing with regards to 
the size of the structure, the aesthetics, like what it would do to the neighborhood. And um, they, I took a quote from their email stating that uh, they thought this was maybe more appropriate for like a shed, not a structure that is shown there at the bottom left corner, which was not given to me by the petitioner, but came through um, by way of one of the neighbors. And then the next slide, um, I did have one more remonstrance letter that came in at basically four o'clock yesterday. So I was able to send that out with um, the reminder this morning for the BZA meeting. So you all hopefully had a chance to look at this one. But with the four people that did call in, um, you know, kind of a summary is they like the neighbors, uh, but they wanted to remain anonymous just to not rock the boat. They were really concerned about the size of the structure, the location, and what the use was um, for the structure because uh, I believe one of the owners is affiliated with a, a tree trimming business and he does drive a truck for them. And there's, um, you know, we, we had a conversation with planning staff to confirm that they were going to only use this for residential storage purposes. A home-based business is not permitted in this zone. A home occupation is, but a home occupation is very specifically required to be within the home or an attached garage. And this will not be attached. So should they start doing business-like activities out of this structure, um, it's not permitted and would maybe be an uphill battle uh, with, with how to get that approved. Um, and then again, the remonstrators were concerned that this would just change the character of the neighborhood. It is a pretty uniform, a lot of people walk out there. And so with that, um, the recommended motions is in case 2009-BAR-58. This is, uh, it is to deny the design standard variance to chapter 833 for front yard setback based on the findings of fact, specifically findings A2, A3, and B1. Um, this has to do mostly with like the character of the area, um, any future expansion along the road because should sewer go in or sidewalks or other utilities someday, having a structure that's just two feet off the right of way may become an issue. Um, and B1 is sort of tied into that as well. And then with petition 2009-BAR-59, uh, staff recommends approve the design standard variance to chapter 833 for maximum lot coverage based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County comments um, with the following condition. And that would be to provide a certified survey and a septic repair permit to change the location of the proposed structure um, that meets buildable area requirements, including setbacks. So we didn't think that that increase in maximum lot coverage was a very significant change to the 20% that's allowed. Um, and in fact, if you look at the other zones, especially zones affiliated with chapter 804, it's, um, you know, having 80% open space is pretty generous. Uh, so that 22.46%, we did not think was a big issue, but we would like to see a better site plan um, and assurance that uh, a septic system could go there in the future because this is only a 0.46 acre lot. All right, any questions? The staff or the board have any questions for staff? I have a question. Uh, Tammy, when you're saying a pole barn, I, I picture this big barn that you have in the country. In their letter, they say it's a storage garage but you've not seen a picture of exactly what they're wanting. Right, this is, um, there is a building permit on file. I don't know if that picture is included in it, but um, there was a picture uh, enclosed with one of the remonstrance letters. Um, they shared, I think that description of the, of the structure um, with the HOA and with the required neighbors via email at one point. Um, and so it, it was a few slides back tied in with some of those remonstrance letters. Um, but it it's there is definitely like a, I think it's a two bay garage 
and then there's an, an, a lean to kind of associated with it as well. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for staff? Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? We're here. I'll just make a couple of quick remarks. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, sir? I do. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for your time. Hope everyone's drinking their coffee. Um, I just want, I feel like there's some further clarification that's needed on what the building is going to be. So it will be a pole barn, uh, but it will be the identical color of our home. It will also have the identical roof. The roof will be the same color and same material as what is going to be on the, ho the home. Um, the only thing different would be the material of the building. So yeah, it's the, the metal material that would be going on the building. Um, and as far as business use, we would not be using it for any uh, business. And that's all I wanted to say. And uh, thank you all for your time. Does the board have any questions for the petitioner? I've got one, Mary Beth. Okay. Uh, Mr. Merritt, I'm curious. You're you're pushing the <clears throat> you're pushing the the structure closer to Audubon Drive. Is that because there's a it's a front load garage and you're trying to eliminate the amount of driveway you're building to the building, or why are you proposing putting it up that far? The the reason is to line it up with our backyard gate. So when I back the boat in. Um, you can see on where I write grass access, um, I can have a straight shot to the garage door. Does that make sense? So, yeah. So the green is your green is your trout, your proposed travel path. So yes. the doors are going to be off the, I'll just assume North is up on the West side on that 28 foot dimension or whatever. That's you're just, it's just a straight shot for you to, so it's a, it's, it's a practical matter that you just don't want to have to curve around your house to back in your, 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 your boat. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Any further questions for the petitioner from the board? One more question. Have you looked at, you lined it up with the back of your fence. How far back would you feel comfortable being able to properly back your boat in because that's a pretty long distance to be able to correct to get oh, in there if it's not just a straight shot i'm uh well i currently so where the word grass is on there that's where the mm -hmm. boat is currently mm -hmm. so i back it up there every time we use it so um you know backing the boat up is is certainly Maybe somebody else would have trouble with it, and I don't want to sound uh, like I'm full of myself, but I can I can back it up with l literally no problem. Okay, so again, my question is, if you were to shove your building back, I'm more concerned shoving it to the south. Is that south, uh, Tammy, to, away from does Audubon run east west? Yes, correct. Okay, so if you if you would position your proposed building further south how much further south since you're such a good backer <laughs> how much further south could you push that building in order to still get your boat in your in your building we could move it further south you start to run into a steeper grade and you also start to get closer to the septic and that those are the two reasons along with the straight shot uh, as to why i asked for it there But yeah, I, I completely understand what you're saying. There, there would be room. My, my, my concern is just like, just like Tammy said, you know, the, the, the reason why there are right away and setbacks is it allows a little, it allows a little bit of room if there are public improvements that need to be done, such as a sewer. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it either forces the municipality to buy your building if they need it, or they have to put it on the other side of the road, which may not be ideal for that purpose. Sure. Uh, 
typically a sewer easement or an easement can be 15 feet. I, I don't want to get too far in the weeds here, but I'm wondering if we didn't shove that building back 15 feet from the scale of everything, it doesn't look like it's too far into the septic. And if there was a motion to do that, I would suggest we did a motion that prior to the construction, just like Tammy's got in her motion, our recommended motion that on the second variance that, you know, the, the, the building permit septic uh, repair permit has to be sought after and, you know, changes to that would have to be made in order to accommodate the 15 feet. I mean, it's an old subdivision. It was put on septic. You know, the thoughts of that at that time that it would, that sewer would run there are probably minimal or minimal or even didn't exist. So it's kind of a, a retrofit on a, on a very old subdivision up in Marlin Hills, which is a very nice subdivision. It is. So that's kind of where I'm going with it. I don't know if the board members have any other thoughts on kind of what I'm saying there. So instead of 32 feet, it would be 47 feet. That dimension 32 would change to 47. So that's all that's all I've got. Uh no more questions for the petitioner. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? I'm not seeing anyone, Mary Beth. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? I'm not seeing anyone. And if, if anyone does want to speak on behalf or against, just unmute yourself. Hi, we have a couple of questions. Um, so one question is, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Sure. Yes, I do. Please state your name. Oh, my name's Cecilia Marin Pantarelli. And my husband is here too, Salvatore Pantarelli. Want him to take that oath? Yes. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, sir? I do. Okay. Thank you. We mainly have a few questions. One question is that the re roofs, roof, roofs are supposed to match. Our understanding is that the roofs will match because the house roof will match the pole barn roof, not the other way around. So the question Correct. is, is the roof on the house changing to metal also? Or that, that's correct. OK. okay. Um, yeah, any other questions? No, I mean, my question would be about the septic and whether a, whether the, a presby can be built on, on that slope, because and that's a question to really the Merricks to be ready for that because that's an expensive thing to do if you had to replace that septic i've replaced uh three in the neighborhood two of which did not even exist so a little little leery of what that might entail so okay yes yeah. so they would have to seek a repair permit so that would cover that i do imagine thank you here anything else I don't think so. Anyone else wish to speak against the petition? I'm not seeing anyone. Bernie, I think you uh, had the basic outline of a motion. Yeah, I can try something here. Uh, in the matter of case number 2008-VAR-58, and I'm going to do these separate. Uh, I'm going to do these separate. So in case number 2008-VAR-58, that would be the design standards variance for chapter 833. The front, sorry, front yard setback, is that correct for the number 58 variance, Tammy? Yes. Yes. Ernie, did correct. you say 2008? I did. 2008-VAR-58, the design standards variance for chapter 833 of the front Sarge setback at 4416 North Thistle Drive. Is that all correct, Tammy? Correct. Is it 2008 or 2009? Oh, I have 2008. 
I it have is, eight on the paper and nine on the screen. And it's eight on the file. So use 2008, please. Okay, thank you. A lot of slides. Thanks, thanks William. I, I didn't I didn't know I didn't know if I was misreading an eight to three or what I was doing. Yeah, I was confused too. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. So anyway, uh, I move that we approve that variance uh, based on the findings in the staff report and subject to the fact that that building be moved an additional 15 feet south. So it would be 17 feet off the right of way instead of two feet off the right of way, if I understand the math. And that uh, that the petitioner provide a certified survey and septic repair permit to change the location of the proposed structure. Pardon me, to provide a certified survey and septic repair permit. I'll second the motion. Uh, the, the motion is on petition number 2008-R-56, Mayor of Front Yard Variance. That's uh, dash 58, I believe. Okay, the agenda's wrong then. Okay, got it. 58, Merritt Front Yard uh, Variance from 833, uh, subject to the condition that the variance only be um, that the new setback will be 17 feet off the right-of-way line. And it's further conditioned upon a certified survey and the uh, obtaining a septic repair from that. Uh, again, the vote would be to approve uh, the variance based upon those conditions. Did I get those, Bernie, okay? Yeah, I think that hits it, Larry, thank you. Okay. Again, vote in favor is vote to approve with the conditions. Mara Clemens? Yes. Bertie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Uh, the uh, variance is approved subject to the conditions of the motion. Now, were we doing the other one too, or? Yeah, I was gonna do them separately. Just okay. In, yeah, okay. So I'll try to do better this time. Uh, case number 2008-VAR-59, uh, design standards variance for chapter 833, maximum building coverage. The address is 4416 North Thistle Drive. I move that we approve the design standards variance to chapter 833 for maximum lot coverage based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway comments with the following condition that the petitioner provide a certified survey and septic repair permit to change the location of the proposed structure that meets the buildable area requirements. And the setback is noted in the motion, the first motion of approval. I'll second that motion as well. Okay, the vote is uh, on petition number 2008 is 50, 59, okay? Nine. Uh, merit maximum lot coverage variance from chapter 833. A vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance with the conditions set forth uh, in the uh, report and shown on the screen of uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mark Clements? Yes. Uh, variance is approved with the conditions five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Merritt. You have a good evening. I'll do the same. Next case, case number 2008-VAR-60, Drew. Thank you. All right, so this is the Sandoval um, side yard setback variance from chapter 833. It's located at 2624 South Hickory Leaf Drive and is zoned RS 3.5. 
Um, summary and background for this petition. Uh, the petition site is 0 0.49 acres located in Van Buren Township at 2624 South Lake Relief Drive. This parcel is, uh, it contains a single family home in a residential neighborhood and is south of Walmart and Sam's Club. Um, the current zoning, as I said before, is RS3.5. And the petitioner is requesting a variance from the side yard setback requirement for the Monroe, of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the purpose of this variance is to allow the petitioner to retain a recently constructed elevated deck and privacy fence that encroaches five feet into the required eight feet side yard setback in the RS3.5 zoning district. Um, so a little bit of history here. Uh, the original building permit for deck plans for this petition uh, for the petitioner uh, was released in September 19th, 2019 by planning staff. On July 17th, 2020, a revised building permit was issued by planning staff to reflect updates from the petitioner that included a outdoor gazebo and an outdoor bathroom. Um, on July 22nd, 2020, the petitioner added another revision and update to the construction plans, which then prompted planning staff to conduct a site visit um, to ensure that uh, what was being represented on the uh, um, application was what was actually being built. Um, and at that time, planning staff then found that the construction of the elevated deck and privacy fence um, had actually encroached five feet into the eight foot side yard setback. All right, so here we have the location map and the current zoning, which we both have already covered. Comprehensive plan has it designated as Makua mixed use, and then Makua phase two has it designated as urban infill neighborhood. So here is the site conditions map and the slope map. <clears throat> um, the site is fairly flat. Um, the recently constructed deck does not really appear in these image images. Um, you can see some of the start of the construction there. Um, but the, the main portion that is extending into the side yard setback is on the southern portion property line, um, just right on the other side of the white fence there that divides these two properties. Um, that is where the side yard setback um, is, in, is encroached upon. Um, the petition site does um, have sewer access. Um, as I stated, it's fairly flat. Um, there's no other uh, floodplain or karst features on the site that we are aware of. Um, and all of these photographs are just aerial photographs trying to give you an, uh, an idea of what the backyard looks like. Um, here are some on the ground photographs of the driveway cut as well as um, the, the side yard. Um, the bottom right photograph is from South Hickory Leaf Drive. Um, you can see that stake there that uh, I believe shows where the property line is between these two properties. Um, the, yellow, the white fence there and then the um, raised deck can be seen there by the mouse cursor. Um, so here we come a little bit closer to it. Uh, the top left photograph is just walking along that white fence and property line to see where the elevated deck is located. Um, and we can see that there. Um, those fence posts are also there. That is also part of the deck extension um, that is part of the encroachment. Um, the right photograph shows um, that same elevated deck area with the added gazebo um, roofing, um, and that also is a part of the um, encroachment into that side yard setback. Um, these other photographs here, the one on the right, um, <clears throat> are from the initial staff visit um, that occurred on uh, late July. Um, and there's a few more photographs, I think, too. Um, that show a little bit more of the idea and um, elevated deck um, um, current configuration for this uh, property. Okay, so here we have the Board of Zoning Appeals letter um, from the petitioner um, that states um, how uh, they came to be where they are in this petition. Um, <clears throat> in the letter, it talks about how they had some confusion about uh, the permissions of having the privacy fence um, and the, the setbacks there. Um, and then on the right, we have the original site plan that was submitted with the first um, uh, building permit application um, that had since then been revised uh, several times. 
um, by the petitioner. Um, here we have the two, <clears throat> excuse me, the two ILP or improvement location permits that were issued to the petitioner. Um, I went ahead and uh, highlighted the sections um, that we have on these permits um, that certify uh, where those side yard setbacks are and whose responsibility it is to make sure that those uh, setbacks are met. Um, the first permit on the right was issued in September 19th, um, and then the uh, revised permit was uh, July 17th, 2020. Um, I do notice there's a typo in that first permit that should say issued 9-19-2019 um, in the top left corner. Um, so this is a, a land use certificate. Um, I included in the petition uh, packet that there was a other variance petition that this property went through, and it was regarding a conditional use variance for the use of a home-based business uh, and a massage therapy business. Um, I included that in the report as we tried to be as comprehensive as, as possible for petition sites. Um, my initial review of that um, information was that it was denied by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, but then after conversations with the petitioner, um, it came to my understanding and um, they were able to present um, um, evidence that they uh, actually had appealed that decision and were ultimately granted um, their use of a home occupation um, for the massage therapy. So I just wanted to include this extra bit um, because it came after um, the, the petition packet was published. Um, so overall, um, planning staff uh, recommends denial of the design standards variance, Chapter 833 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance, based on the findings of fact, uh, specifically finding C, um, <clears throat> and that is practical difficulties, um, which cannot be reasonably addressed through the redesign or relocation of the development buildings or structure, existing or proposed, and that is because um, we have those um, excerpts on the uh, excuse me, the permits that say um, that the petitioner or the applicant is responsible to know those setbacks and that those setbacks are labeled on those permits. Um, so we felt that it was uh, necessary to deny or recommend denial for this petition. I will now take any questions. Does the board have any questions for Drew? I have a question. I'm sorry. I, um, this is Margaret, and I was uh, serving on the Board of Zoning Appeals when the business use was uh, approved. And I just uh, would like to ask, um, Drew, if you um, were able to certify or not that the nature of the business was to care for a disabled um, person or people. Um, I do, session. I'm sorry, I do not have enough information to talk specifically okay. more about uh, the previous petition. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff? Yeah, I have one. Okay. So Drew, did I, you said that if this is denied, that deck would have to be torn down? Um, I believe in the report, um, I state that if it is to be denied, um, let me check my wording here. Um, if denied, the deck and fence will be required to either be removed, remodeled, or relocated to meet the side yard setback. Okay. Any further questions for staff? Would the petitioner like to speak? Of course. <laughs> okay. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, thank you. I'm here with Dana. Please with state your name. Moises Lopez Sandoval. Okay, thank you. Proceed. Okay. Um, we start doing the, the school and the hot tub, especially for people with disability. That way they can help with the pain. Um, and then they can, they can, uh, people will live here in the house. And um, two years ago, we started uh, building our fence and then the another size, and we called to the planning and they said, well, the requirement to that is only leave uh, three feet and we don't need a, a, a specific permit to do that. And this is what the reason, 
I I start when I start building the the fences and the in in the south side, I leave this I leave this space, this three or four feet. That way will not will be a problem. Mm -hmm. I talk with my nephew, Steve. Uh, he say he want the fence over there because he already built one and he wanted to have something private. Our art is so big, we, he don't have private between us. It's a necessity to be the that fence right there because somebody can fall over there. Mm -hmm. And then here, we, we live here in the house. Would you like to say something? Um, I'm Donna Dillard. And, um, as far as the privacy fence, it's only on that one section and we were under their impression and we talked with the neighbors and everything. And the reason we made the deck so big, one of the reasons, because um, I do like my son is in a wheelchair and that means we can go around the pool all the way around and he can be safe. And if we have a privacy fence, I, he can be in his wheelchair and have more freedom knowing that he won't go off the side. So. Yeah, it is a privacy fence, but it's also a safety thing. For even like my son, he is in a wheelchair, you know, or he doesn't walk. So he has a chance to move around freely with having space. And that's it. Thank you. Mary Beth, I'll note you're on mute. Yeah, there I'm you. sorry. Does the board have any questions for the petitioner? I have to admit something. I'm having a hard time picturing this fence that they're talking about. Drew, can you put up a, the photo of the fence and how that correlates with the, so is it the white? Is that what we're talking about? No, so the white is actually the neighbor's fence. Um, okay. Jackie, if you go back one slide, I think there's a little bit better of a picture. Um, so this left photograph shows the posts um, for the fence. Um, it, okay. it extends off of, on top okay. of the uh, extended deck, or excuse me, elevated deck. Um, and they had not uh, finished building that fence yet at the time of this um, um, site visit that I, I conducted. Um, because they were going through the variance process. Okay, thank you. That that's very helpful because I couldn't see a problem. I couldn't see a problem with a fence. That's where I was struggling. Thanks, Drew. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other questions from the board. Okay, I have one. Um, Jackie, I the little little tiny section. Between the white fence and what's going up as the new fence, who maintains that? Is that part of the petitioner's property? I do. I do. It's, it's part of my property. And, and he mows it and keeps it up. He keeps the upkeep on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions for the petitioner? Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Anybody? No. Anyone? Oh, I see one um, hammock. Yeah. Are yes. you in support or remonstrance? I'm in support. I mean, I'm against. I'm against. I am. My father is the neighbor. Okay. okay. One minute. Uh, okay. I'm speaking on behalf of my father. Okay. Just one moment, sir. Anyone here wants to speak for the petition on behalf of the petition? Not seeing anyone. Okay. Is there anybody here that would like to speak against the petition? Yes. Okay. Would you raise your hand, sir? Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name. Troy Hammock. Okay, you can proceed, sir. Okay. So I'm speaking on behalf of my father, and um, I. It was my understanding that the property. It's a setback, so I, I thought it was somewhat county maintained right next to it. Like it was like a, a, an easement or, or whatnot. But his concern is that he, he cannot get beside that. 
maintain it or if there's any issue with it, he's not able to get to it because of the encroachment of that on the setback. So it concerns him with it. And even if there's something that I, I don't know what the, the uh, rules are there, or the laws as far as if, if a fire broke out with, with that, that building, it's so close to that fence that that alerts him as well. So that, that is our concern that it, that it is so close on the setback. Uh, and not to mention, I, I don't know if my, I'm having trouble with my reception, but I don't know if as well, we're having a discussion about the monstrosity of this, as far as the, the elevation, as far as how high it's going, the building, because it's like it over, it, it empowers over all my father's property. I mean, it, the decking is almost level with his privacy fence to where you can basically oversee over the backyard. I mean, there, it, you, you pretty much have no privacy at all because of that. But that, that's where we wanted to voice our opinion and I'm done. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Does the board have any questions for Mr. Hammock? I've got one. I'm wondering, looking at the picture now that I understand the fence that's attached to the deck, that fence will will block will will be a privacy fence in in both directions. Is that correct? Where those posts are erected, there'll be a fence that goes along those posts along the full length of the deck. Is that correct? Right, where nobody can we can't see our neighbors and they can't see us. So he would have all of the privacy he wants. Okay, and then the, is the, I'm looking at page 139, photo eight facing east. Is that white fence of the neighbors? It looks like it's a translucent or it. It's vinyl. Okay. Uh, but it. Who, it again, go going back to Vicki's question, the area between the deck and that white fence, that is owned by the petitioner, correct? All right. I, it was my understanding it was the county. It was an ease like an easement. When we bought when he bought my dad brought the property. An easement or a setback? Or, or maybe yeah. it was a setback. Maybe it was okay. a setback. Okay. So you wouldn't need to you wouldn't need to get on that side of the fence if he's mowing it. Unless you no, have our own, and, and his only working. concern, yeah, his only concern was if he had to do anything with that type of fence, that he's not going to have any room because of that encroaching over there on the setback. That was his only worry. Sure. Because it's so fence, close. But that fence is on the property line, or I'm assuming, or close to it anyway. So it, you'd have to work yeah. out something with Mr. Lopez to be able to get on the other side to work on that fence. Yes, sir. Well, so I guess where we're basically at on this is, I guess, with all due respect, I guess you can pretty much go and build things on setbacks and then just from that point, ask for forgiveness. Just don't ask for permission, but then ask for forgiveness later. That's my understanding. Yeah, so Mr. Hammock, just rules kind of of the meeting we typically just ask you questions and we can respond yes, to your sir. questions but yes, yeah so yes, so this is a request because we have um a petition here and they've submitted a permit and revised yes, that permit and that was found to be the issue so what is di for discussion tonight by the board of zoning appeals is the issue okay. of the setback on mr sandoval lopez's property okay. so i'm just i'm voicing for my father that's all he's on here Sounds thank good. you Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak against this petition? Anybody, Jackie? I'm not seeing anyone there, but. Okay. In that case, does one of the board members have a motion ready? Drew, if, there's no, there's no problem. Hang on, just, I'm sorry, William. There's no problem with the height of the structure, correct? The height uh, restrictions for this subdivision, I believe, are also included on the permit, and that is 40 feet. Okay, so that so the height of that of that structure is not in question. No. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, if All I right. also, if my, I may also add some clarification. Um, I should have included this in the petition report, 
Um, but there's also a subdivision plat available for this uh, property. Um, it is lot 19 in the Leonard Springs edition subdivision. Um, and looking at this plat document, I can uh, safely say that there is no easement on the shared property line between lot 19 and lot 20 to the south. Um, there are easements along the rear property and the northern property line um, of lot 19, but not the southern property line that we are talking about this evening. It's just a setback. Okay, any further questions? William, did you have a motion? Um, no, I'm still thinking about this one. Okay. Is it too late to ask Mr. Sandoval a question? Uh, no, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Sandoval, are, are you prepared to offer any plans to remodel? Well, we'll be, we'll be cost a lot of money. You yeah. mean remodel as an addition or remodel if you guys say no? Yes, remodel if we say no. It would cost us a lot of money, but we have to follow the law and we will do what's right. But yeah, it would, it would really yeah, hurt, but yes, we'll do what's right. Um, but we, we caught it, you see the pool over there? It's uh, like a two feet it will be so, so, so close. It was the reason we make it bigger because that way the wheelchair can go through. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay. And so then actually brings up a question for me and it may um, be addressed to uh, attorney Dave Schilling about uh, practical difficulties involving uh, planning and design for disabled people and uh, how that might impact uh, the practical difficulties uh, criteria of, um, of our findings. Yeah, I say no. something. Well, one second, Mr. Sandoval. Dave, you're on mute. Yeah, I, um, I guess my thinking is that the practical difficulties are tied to the condition of the land uh, rather than the occupants. Okay. I understand Mr. Hammock's question. I, I didn't want to answer it because I don't like to get into that mode, but the, the the thing that's going through, I think everyone's mind is, is that, you know, is this a beg for forgiveness later? And I, I don't see it as that scenario. I think that they went through and did, had multiple conversations and whether it was just a lack of understanding or not, you know, the three feet for the fence to be off the property line, that's a confusing answer if that is what they got from staff because I, I don't think that's in any ordinance that, that a fence can be right on the line. Uh, it's a good practice to keep it a little bit off, but I, 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 he did go through and they, they've had various procedures and they've petitions and, and they've, they have gone through the building and building department to seek out the proper way to go and I don't think that they were misinformed. I, I'm not laying that on staff or on the building department, but I just think that there was a misunderstanding. And I don't think this is a build it and hope, hopefully they don't come scenario. Uh, so that said, I can go ahead and put a motion out there if I'm not trying to rush it, but okay. that's kind of where I'm coming from folks. Yeah, I, I consider practical difficulty environmental and economic waste. Is that a practical difficulty? Yeah, Mayor Beth, a practical difficulty arises from conditions on the property that do okay. not generally exist in the area. For example, the property conditions create a relatively unique development problem. Okay. Bernie, if you want to go ahead and try to make a motion. Okay. Uh, 
Matter case number 2008-VAR-61, Design Standards Variance, uh, Residential Storage Structure, Chapter 802 at, no, 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 I'm sorry, I've done it, excuse me. That was my fault, William. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, folks. I have to go through the petitions on my computer screen and then not have the Zoom in front of me. So I have to go back and forth. So I do apologize for wasting everybody's time. I knew okay. you. Okay. Matter of case number 2008 VAR 60. Uh, Moises Lopez Sandoval, excuse me if I'm wrong, uh, request the design standards variance chapter 833 side yard setback at 2624 South Hickory Leaf Drive. Uh, I move that we approve the variance and I do see practical difficulties subject to the, the uh, findings in the staff report and the recommendations by the uh, planning staff and the uh, anything from the highway department. That's all I got. I second this. I second your motion. Okay, uh, the vote is on position number 2008 VAR 60, Sandoval side yard setback. Uh, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance with the uh, change in the finding from the staff report that uh, there are practical, the petition request does meet chapter 801 definition of practical difficulties, which is cannot be reasonably addressed for the redesign or relocation of the development building structure existing or proposed. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve uh, the variance uh, with the uh, findings amended uh, to support approval. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Barry Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Barry Clements. Yes. Okay, variance is approved uh, five to zero. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you have a good evening. You too. Good Thank you. At this point in the meeting, I was wondering do we need a break? Yeah, we can we can certainly entertain a, a five minute break, Mary Beth. Okay, I think a five minute break would be good for everybody. All right, we'll be back here at, what time is it? 7.47 now, so 7.52. 7.52, all right, thank you. We'll see you in a second. We got all our board members? Yep, we're ready to get started. Okay, and the next case is case number 2008-VAR-61, Cammie? Okay, two corrections. This is actually two zero, hold on, two zero zero nine dash VAR dash six one, which is correct on the slide, incorrect in the packet. And also um, there's a correction in the acreage. It should be 2.84, which is correct in the packet. And I think everywhere else except this slide, apologies. Um, so this is a 2.84 acre lot located at 8458 North Jenner Road in Bean Blossom Township, section 22. It's in the Pinewood subdivision and it is zoned Ag RR. So it does meet all the design standards requirements for that subdivision. And the comprehensive plan has it, I believe as a designated community um, it's located just off of Steinsville area. Um, our aerials that we have show this as a vacant lot, um, but in the spring of, I think it was April 2020 this year, there was a 2,400 square foot pole barn built without any Monroe County permits. Um, and the issue with that is there is not a residence on this property so it exceeds the allowed amount, which is normally 1,750 square feet. 
So the background, yes, it's a residential storage structure. It exceeds the maximum allowed for a structure without a residence on the lot with it. Um, this is a couple of site photos. There is a driveway. They later have now submitted a driveway permit. Um, the site on the bottom here, to the left, there is actually a sinkhole conservancy area and staff is going to require a better site plan because even during the site visit, it was unclear if this encroached into the sinkhole conservancy area. Um, but yeah, this is the structure that was uh, built on the site. Uh, this is it facing north and I also would like to get a confirmation of the height. So I did try to get them to submit a building permit application. They submitted it one hour before this staff packet went out. Uh, we were on the verge of continuing it just for lack of information, but uh, staff would still like to confirm that it meets the height and um, is not located within the sinkhole um, conservation area. Staff visit also revealed, you probably saw in some of those other photos that the site was very disturbed. It was not, um, you know, there was a, a lack of stabilization on the site and um, we requested that they, you know, seed and straw the area, which they did do. Um, and they also helped by proving that they had placed the notification marker on site and they did finally submit building permit application, though it still quite isn't sufficient. Um, there is a septic on site, and we did finally get a permit for that. And then we have an aerial below um, just showing some of the clearing that had occurred in April of 2020 and um, before they actually put the structure up. This is part of the Pinewood subdivision. It's platted. The interesting thing about Jenner Drive is that it terminates just east of the petition site um, it's known as a dead man's hill. Uh, so when they created the subdivision, uh, they got rid of that ingress egress because it was so dangerous. So it's, it's on a dead end road, even though from Google maps, it looks like it connects. Uh, to the right there is their initial site plan where they just showed a 40 by 60 floating square. Uh, we asked that they from, you know, showed us a better site plan, which is what's next. Um, and that still just doesn't quite suffice for us. We need a little bit more uh, confirmation that the sinkhole uh, was not infringed upon, that it was platted on the subdivision uh, with a little bit better you know, um, setbacks and, and septic location. That just seemed, having been out there from staff visit, didn't seem quite right. Um, the recommended motion for 2008-VAR-61 is to deny the design standards variance from chapter 802 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance based on the findings of fact, specifically finding C, this is a self-created hardship. They did not come to us for any permits. Had they done this, uh, we would have, you know, let them know that there was a size restriction um, and, and maybe they would not have been in this scenario. Any, any questions? questions for staff? Questions for staff? I have a question. Um, so Tammy, if this is denied, do they have to tear down the structure? Or? They, they would have to alter it. Um, they would have to alter it to get it down to the 1750 square feet. Um, the only other way that would bring it into compliance is to submit a residential building permit and put a residence on the lot. Um, and, you know, there is staff letter um, that states, I believe they're trying to sell the lot and, but we don't have a specific timeline of when that would occur. It was just a little vague um, for the request. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for staff? Is the petitioner here? Oh, may I add one more thing? Yes. And there was, a remonstrance letter associated with this petition, and I did send it out this morning with the BZA reminder. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't. Uh, that was a different petition. I did have one person come uh, call in on this petition, and they were concerned about the size of this building. Um, they didn't want to make it an official remonstrance. They were just not wanting to see these types of buildings built in their neighborhood. Um, 
it just seemed excessive to them. Okay, so sorry, I did not include that That's in fine. The PowerPoint. Is the petitioner here, Janet Neal? Uh, the petitioner is not here. Uh, I'm actually setting in on the meeting on her behalf. Uh, this is okay, Adrian. sir, uh, do you swear to tell the truth in nothing but the truth? Yes. State your name, please. I'm AJ Baldwin. Okay, AJ, you can proceed. <coughs> um, so it's my understanding from my client, I have the listing on the property that when they did try to make contact with the county back in the spring, obviously it was right in the height of the shutdown. And they said they never received a, an answer or a, a call back on it and proceeded with the building. Um, so, um, and obviously they were not aware of the size restriction um, or they, you know, obviously would not have built it to be 2,400 square feet. They had plans at that time, they were gonna build a house um have since decided not to obviously that's why it's listed for sale um we have had interest in it obviously you know uh, until we get this variance and, and everything in place here um we can't really move forward with the transaction um so i've got a couple of questions i guess on the building permit application that uh Tammy said was not sufficient. If I could get more clarification on that so I can help them with that and, you know, maybe straighten out any issues there or any, any questions. Um, um, I can discuss that with you probably the next, you know, tomorrow, if, if this does go through, we can discuss the, it, it's basically providing the height of the structure and a better site plan. Okay. The, the height measured on each corner or? Uh, something that meets the definition of height. And I can send that to you. Okay, well, and the reason I ask is the elevation is different on each, on, on both sides, so. Correct, yes. And one, from one way it looks okay, and from the other way, I'm not sure. So just, that's why we need a few more dimensions. Okay. Um, as far as altering the building um i'm not sure i mean that would be a quite a bit of expense to try to do that uh, i'm not sure how they would even go about disassembling it at this point to alter the size so I, you know hopefully i guess we can get something figured out here for them on that um you know, I, I, we can definitely get a better site plan um, drawn up, but i um, not sure how you alter an existing 60 by 60 structure that's got a concrete floor and, and that. So I, I guess I, if, if this gets denied, denied, I guess another question is, you know, can we apply again and try to get more clarification on some of this or what, you know, what would the next step be? Uh, there's a limit on the, I think it's either six months or a year to apply again. Uh, if you've been turned down on a variance, uh, if there's additional information or if it would be helpful for the petitioner to be actually present uh, we could continue it to the next meeting in November. That would be your, your best bet rather than taking right. a vote with the inadequate information. Right. I mean, if we can continue it to November, I think at this point, that would be great. And, and I can get with Tammy and, and, you know, figure out what else we need to provide for clarification on the permit um, on the application and then Go from there. Okay, motion to continue this until November. Do we need a motion? When they come back, I, I would like to make sure that when they submit their, and normally I don't push this unless there's big, unless there is a question and staff has them, make sure that they do submit a site plan or not a site plan, excuse me, a building permit application that does have adequate 
an adequate drawing that's to scale and shows exactly what's there. Of the of the building itself. Well, just the building, whatever's on the building permit application, I think that uh, <laughs> Ms. Neal needs to do her due diligence in making sure that she presents something that that staff is happy with the building department can utilize in order to help us make a decision and understand physically what's on the property. Okay. Uh, then the other question I've got is they, and this will help me in the next meeting because I think a continuance is a great idea. Uh, you said that they were going to build on the property. Did they have a set of plans that they were that they were looking at? Um, they, I think they did. Yes, they had a couple of different drawings they were they were considering. And um, if we provided those, would that would would that help as far as a potential? Yeah, I'm I'm just curious. And then the uh, the other question: Who built it? Uh, so the petitioner's uh, fiance. Basically, they, they built it themselves. Okay. So, uh, I have a question. I thought you said they were trying to sell it, the property. They are now. They, they initially were going to build their own house on it. That's why they wanted to build the pole barn. They built the pole barn the size they did because at the time they had a, a large fifth wheel. And so that was storage for their fifth wheel. And um, they were going to build a house there. They have since decided not to build um they're going to stay where they're at in a townhouse they purchased last year and um, have decided to sell the property so is is the sale contingent upon the board's decision i mean we had an offer initially on the property that that was contingent upon the variance and a permit for this being in place, obviously, so that they could then get a building permit for a house, um, those buyers. So that's when we started this process. Um, those buyers have since moved on to another property, not because of anything related to this, they just found an existing house they wanted to buy um, and decided not to buy and build themselves. Um, but I mean, yeah, obviously the potential sale of this property, um, you know, this issue would have to be cleared up and, and everything taken care of. Okay, thank you. So it was, I got one more, I'm sorry, one more question. So, you know, it, it's just, Ms. Neal knew that there was a permitting process that had to go through. That That's, so when she, when she said she didn't get a response, did she try to go to the office? Did she call and leave messages? Did she send an email? What, what do you have that, that, that shows that she did try to reach out? And I, mean, I, would have, I would have to get that information from her because I wasn't involved with them at that time when they were trying to get that process started. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, honestly, how many phone calls or if she did send an email, I, I honestly don't know, Bernie. So, okay. That, that's uh, all I had. I'm just trying to set the stage a little bit to help me understand for the next meeting. So that's all I've got, Mary Beth. Sorry to jump okay. in. Do we need that. a motion to continue this? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. I think you could do it by or a vocal mo motion. Okay. I move that we continue this until the November meeting. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Continue to the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have case number 2009-VAR-62. Rebecca? Yes, hi. Uh, so this, is, uh, this petition is a request for a minimum lot size um, on this parcel for the purpose of constructing a 51 foot by 24 foot carport. Um, the site contains approximately 2.0 acres, but in the Ag RR zone, which is what this parcel is zoned, um, 2.5 acres are required. Um, so the petition site is located at 6899 North Maple Grove Road in Bloomington Township, Section 31. 
um, and again, it's zoned Ag RR. There's some slope present on the lot, but it is not at all impacted um, by the proposed location of the carport. Uh, the comp plan has the site designated as rural residential. Here are some site photos um, on the left. I'm just looking, I just shot a, a photograph of the place where they would like to put the carport um, in. And then on the picture on the right is just a different angle um, of, this, of the same, uh, of the location of where they wanna put the carport. Here we are looking, uh, um, on the, in the left picture, we're looking north and then the, South picture, or in the right picture, we're looking south um, down North Maple Grove Road. And I do want to mention that there are other parcels in the vicinity that do not meet the minimum lot size. Um, but if this, uh, if this variance is requested, um, I want to note that the parcel does meet all other design standards. Um, so uh, so it's, we're just looking for the minimum lot size. Um, on the right is the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and on, on the right is the site plan. I might have mixed that up. Anyway, um, we, staff does recommend that uh, approval of the design standards variance to the minimum lot size standard in Chapter 804 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance based on our findings and fact. Findings Any questions for staff? Sorry. It's okay. Any questions for staff? I have one. It has to do with uh, so many um, variations to the minimum lot size standard tonight. And it seems as though um, it, you know, it'll set a precedent like you mentioned in this neighborhood. And I wonder what is the um, pressure um, the overwhelming pressure to change the minimum lot size and everything. I wonder if staff could uh, answer that question for me. So, um, Margaret, we've seen kind of an unprecedented number of building permits come in the past um, few months. We didn't see hardly any in March and April, and now they're kind of coming in and uh, we're actually exceeding where we were this time last year. And so a lot of these variance requests relate to the volume of building permit applications that we receive in the office. Um, I do think as far as the lot width and lot size requirements in the county, um, if people have had their homes or their properties for a long time and haven't done any development since before the ordinance in 1997, they would have never known that they didn't have mm. the right lot size or lot width. So um, it's something we want to address in the new zoning ordinance. I don't know if anyone has anything else to add. That answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay, seeing none. Are Greg and Monica Bartlett here? And would you like to speak? No, I don't. I assume you do not want to speak. No. Okay. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? I'm not seeing anyone, Mary Beth. Anyone here wish to speak against this petition? Not seeing anyone. Okay, is one of the board members ready to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Case number 2009-BAR-62 uh, for design standards variance chapter 804 minimum lot size standard at 6899 North Maple Grove Road. I move that we approve the variance based on the findings of facts and the recommendations of the planning committee. I'll second that motion. Larry, you wanna call roll? Yes, uh, the vote is on petition number 2009, issue R-62, Bartlett minimum lot area variance. 
a vote in favor is vote to approve the variance based upon the findings of fact uh, and the staff report. Uh, William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Kismarchuk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Uh, Margaret Clements? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Variance is approved 5 0. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Bartlett. Thank you. Have a good evening. Next up, we have case numbers 2009 VAR 3, minimum lot area, and case number 2009 VAR 64, minimum lot width. Uh, Rebecca? Yep. Hi again. Um, so this is a petition for property located um, at 9451 South Chapel Hill, Hill Road uh, in Polk Township, Section 32. Um, the current zoning is Forest Reserve. And uh, there is some slope present on this parcel, uh, but it will not be impacted uh, by the proposed uh, uh, modular home that's planned for the lot. Uh, the comp plan has this designated as farm and forest. Um, so uh, here we are looking at the parcel. Um, there was at one point a mobile home on this lot um, and there is remnants of the concrete foundation um, that was part of that um, or connected to that home and then there's also uh, you can see sort of a footprint gravel footprint um, which was a, a, again related to the old mobile home that was at the lot um, the petitioner is actually uh, going to push the location of the uh, new home slightly um, away from that existing footprint, but some of it will be incorporated in the new design. Um, it's hard to see in these photos, but uh, the lot actually has an existing semi-circle semi driveway um, and highway department um, has uh, it, uh, required in their permit that the west driveway point be removed. Um, so I did want to note that in the petition um, or in the in this case. And then next next slides, Jackie. Um, here is a bird's eye view. Um, so you can see several of these lots. Again, this is a, a minimum lot area variance request and a minimum lot width request. Um, and I didn't highlight it but you can see the uh, adjacent lots are very similar in dimension uh, to the, this uh, parcel in, uh, um, involved in this petition. Um, so uh, letter to the um, BZA on the left. Um, again, petitioner is wanting to place a modular home at this location, um, possibly to be used in the future for retirement purposes. On the right is the site plan um, and you can see the sim, sim, semi-circle driveway has been illustrated. Um, again, one of the access points will be removed um, as a requirement of the driveway permit. Um, you can see the location of the proposed house, um, its relation to septic, and then there is an existing carport on the lot um, that they uh, intend to keep for now. Um, I just wanted to throw in again, the driveway permit has been issued for this location um, with the requirement that the West driveway entrance be removed. And recommended motion uh, to approve the design standards variance request from the minimum lot area requirement and the minimum lot width requirement in chapter 804 of the M Monroe County <laughs> zoning ordinance. Uh, any questions? There's a typo in there, sorry. It shouldn't say highway zoning ordinance, but it does, so. Any questions for staff? Uh, 
Not seeing any questions for staff. Is the petitioner here? Ernie, uh, you had a question in your on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. This is kind of in with uh, Margaret's Margaret's observation, which was a good one earlier. That you know had it's only be, it's not a problem with the building or the fact they want to put the carport. Is the fact that the the existing parcel does not meet the current zoning. That's so right. there's kind of two unrelated things there, which is why this is a this is a, a variance re request. Am I correct? You're right. You're correct. Okay. So the Thank lot you. is not meeting the the minimum requirements for area or width. Any further questions for staff? Is the petitioner here, and would they like to speak? Yes, I'm here, and yes, I'd like to speak. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name. Christy Hensley. Okay, Christy, please go ahead. I just want to add, and it's noted in the report, that we've owned this property for 20 years uh, and had no idea of these new ordinances that have been, have been put in place. We were already well in the process of having a home built when we found this out that now there's a new five acre minimum requirement when we only own three. So we're we got $20,000 worth of investment already made into this before we found this out. So it should it should result in an increased property value significantly for the whole area. So there's a lot of, of positives with this. Um, so anyway, I just hope that we can get this approved and appreciate your time. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Does any of the board members have any questions for the petitioner? None. Is there anybody else here that wishes to speak on in favor of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? Seeing none, do one of my fellow board members have a motion? Bernie? Yeah, I'm trying. I, am I muted or not? I can't. No, you're on. All right, sorry. Case number 2009-VAR-63, minimum lot width area, and case number 2009-VAR-64, minimum lot width, uh, request is for dot design standards varies for minimum lot area requirements, chapter 804, design standards varies for minimum lot width requirements, 804 at 9451 South Chapel Hill Road. I move that we approve both variances subject to the staff report and findings and that the requirements of the Monero County Highway Department be met with respect to the uh, West driveway being removed. Did I hit it? You hit it. I second it. Okay. Larry? Okay. Uh, the vote is on petition number 2009-VAR-63 uh, and 64. Uh, the Hensley minimum lot width and lot area variances respectively. The vote is to approve based upon the findings and with the conditions of the staff report, including uh, removal of the driveway as requested by the Monroe County Highway Department. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance with the conditions, both variances with the conditions. Mary Beth Smarchuk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Bertie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Okay. Variances are granted five to zero with the conditions uh, accompanying the motion. Thank you, Ms. Hensley. You, you have a good okay. evening. You too. Enjoy Thank your you. retirement home. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have case number 2009-VAR-65. And that's Jackie. Yep. Um, so this one is a variance request for the environmental constraints overlay area two. So it's 15% slope. Um, the property is located off of East Pine Grove Road. And the request is that they would like to, <clears throat> excuse me, modify this deck area here and build onto it. Um, a, I believe it was 20 by 24 addition um, onto the south side of the home. So this is the request, and then it would be also a multi-level um, addition here. 
And because of the slope area between the home and then as you can see on the screen here, there's kind of a driveway to the barn area. Um, they're asking for the Eco 2 uh, variance. So here is the property location, Salt Creek. Um, the comprehensive plan has this rural residential, it's conservation residential, it's meeting all other design standards. Um, as you can tell, the property is very constrained. We're not seeing your screen, Jackie. Oh, thank you, Mary Beth. Thanks, Mary Beth. I thought I was having a moment there. <laughs> Excuse me. I Sorry. <laughs> Let me uh, back up a second. You guys could stop me earlier. I'm so <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Well, we read our packets. So <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad about, you so. read the packet. Okay, so uh, this is a photo here of the uh, the addition that they would like to add to the home. So it's a 20 by 26 addition, and they would be modifying the location of the existing deck here and adding on this uh, multi-level addition to the south side of the home. And so this is the Eco 2 variance for 15%. Um, and so the, the area is pretty slope constrained as you can see from the image on the left. Um, and they're very limited in where they can actually build um, an addition on this property. So um, I've also highlighted in yellow, they have an existing holding tank, which they've, um, they acquired the property recently and worked with the health department and they're actually going to be installing a Presby system, which is in the green. And that area is actually uh, less slope constrained than the area up by the house. So this is a single family residence. This is the barn area. Um, so as part of this, they would be putting in a, a, a new septic system. So I just wanted to include some um, information on this 20 by 26 addition on the footprint. It is multi-level as I mentioned before, but um, and this is the area here. Uh, they'll be kind of removing this deck portion here to, a, to the extent where I show kind of the mouse and then extending it out um, this way towards um, the photo on the right towards you. So, and, and this is their driveway area. As you come in, you kind of have a choice to go uh, to the left, to the home, or you can go to the right, which is used as um, a barn area. So um, the recommended motion by staff is to approve the Eco 2 variance subject to one condition, which is that they um, submit and get approval of a grading permit and erosion control plan reviewed by the planning department and the highway department's MS4 operator. I'll take any questions. Does the board have any questions for Jackie? <clears throat> See, no questions. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? I am here. Um, I don't know if I have a lot to add to that though. Unless you don't have to speak if you don't want to, sir. Okay, I'm All here right. for questions. All right. Uh, is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? And does one of my fellow board members have a motion, please? Matter of case number 2009-VAR-65. Uh, this is the design standards variance chapter 825 of the Eco Environmental Constraints Overlay Zone Area 2, parentheses 15% slope, the address being 7212 East Pine Grove Road. I move that we approve the variance based on the staff report, report findings of fact, and that the uh, the petitioner submit and get approved a grading permit and erosion control plan reviewed by the Monroe County Planning Department and the Monroe County Highway Department's MS4 operator. Second. <laughs> okay, call roll for us, Larry. Okay, those on position number uh, 2009-ER-65, the Eldon uh, variance from the environmental constraints overlay 50% slope requirement, a motion to approve, approve uh, a favorable motion is a vote to approve uh, the variance subject to the uh, submission and approval 
of a grading permit and erosion control plan to be reviewed by the Monroe County Planning Department and the Highway Department's MS4 operator. Uh, again, a vote in favor is vote to approve the variance. Uh, Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mark Clements? Yes. Bertie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Vestas Marchek? Yes. Variance is approved 5 0. Thank you, Mr. Alden. You have a good evening. Thank you much. Next up, case numbers 2009 VAR 66 and 2009 VAR 67. Ann? Thank you, Mary Beth. Uh, you guys are killing it tonight. What an agenda. <laughs> so, our petitioner is Mary Baker, uh, care of Stephanie and Jeff Baker. So this is two design steered variances, both from the detached accessory dwelling unit uh, definition and conditions. So that's condition number 55. So the property is located in Bean Blossom Township at 8000 North Mount Tabor Road. Um, it's currently zoned agricultural rural reserve and the comp plan does designate this as rural residential. So the first variance request is that the DADU, uh, the acronym DADU, must share a driveway with the principal dwelling unit. So the petitioners are requesting this um, because their current, the primary develop, um, excuse me, the primary residence is, oh, sorry, Jackie, you can go back a couple. That right there, yeah, perfect. So their primary um, access to their, their primary residence is an access easement. So in order to expand the driveway to have to meet this criteria, they would have to um, they would have to request an extension of the easement from the southern neighbors, and they're just uh, they're not confident with uh, having to request that. You know, it could be could go either way. Um, so. The proposed driveway, before we kind of got into this with the petitioners and getting variances, they had already submitted a driveway application, uh, permit application, and they did get it. So it is a safe driveway. Um, so if this first variance is approved, then you know we do know that it is <clears throat> a safe access point. Um, and when I did go over this with my director, Larry, he uh, was in support of, of this variance request as well. So the second one, also from condition number 55, is that a detached accessory dwelling unit is limited to a thousand square feet of residential space. And so this is an update. The, the report does state that they were requesting um, 1,600 square feet. They were, they were hoping to... Um, purchased a, a used mobile home. It would, would have been a, a double mobile home and they were hoping to renovate that and turn part of it into a detached garage. Um, since I, I spoke with them just the other day and they found a different mobile home. And so now their new request is uh, much less than the original. So they're now uh, requesting uh, approximately 1300 square feet. So 300 or so square feet more than the current limitation. Um, so the petitioners did purchase this property with the belief that it was a legal lot of record. It's the parcel that we're kind of discussing right now is 1.83. Um, but as of uh, yesterday or today, it has been legally combined with the rest of the family's adjoining property so that it is legal. And the, then the only way that they would have a a second residence is if they did the detached accessory dwelling unit. So the petitioners are trying to, the, pe the petitioner, Mary Baker, she's um, been trying to relocate down here from Indianapolis and she is currently living with the petitioners, Stephanie and Jeff um, at the property in their home. And so they've been trying to figure out a way and they, they thought they, uh, you know, had a deal with getting this adjoining property, but with legal issues, it, it turned out it took a few extra steps. So they've been fantastic working with us. Um, they've now combined their property. Uh, you know, we're happy to support them during these DADU requests, but this is the, the only route towards getting that second residence because their um, total property acreage is still under the amount that they would need to be able to subdivide. So again, they're currently zoned Ag RR. Comprehensive plan identifies them as rural residential. 
So the site, um, not too much slope. There's really not many environmental concerns. Uh, they do have a, an approved septic permit for the proposed location of the DADU. So the, the image on the left, this is the parcel that we're discussing. It's 1.83 acres, and this is the, would be the location of the DADU. The, the residence on the bottom right, that is the primary residence. So the photo on the bottom right of the slide, that highlights the, the full three parcels uh, and now one legal out of record owned by the Bakers. So a few photos, this area is pretty wooded with some understory um, trees, so it's kind of difficult to get a good photo. Um, the aerial imagery, the pictometry was a little better because you can see that it's you know not quite as grown up. It's a little bit thinner. So this is their new updated site plan. So different from the report. Um, this shows the new location of, of the mobile home, which is now 27 by 48. Um, the approved septic location and the, at least by Monroe County Highway, approved driveway permit location. Again, that is one of the variances we're looking at whether or not they could have a, a separate driveway entrance. So staff is recommending to approve both of the design standard variances from condition number 55 for the shared driveway and from the 1,000 square feet residential space limitation um, from the daddy requirements. The following condition um, I did have in the report, but as of yesterday, they have met this condition. So I don't know if we need to include that or not. I guess that's maybe up to you guys. But the condition at the time of the report was that they would combine this tax parcel uh, with their adjoining legal property, legal lot of record property. Um, so I got the email with their, their recorded deeds just, just yesterday, I believe. So does anybody have any questions? Any questions for staff? Seeing none, are the petitioners here and would they like to speak? I believe they are here, but I think they were um, happy to, you know, address questions if anybody had them. We okay. are here, and if you have questions, yes, we're happy to answer them. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? I have a question. Okay. Hold on. Can you state your name and raise your hand and tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Please state your My, name. Yes, it's Jason Kerr. I just, I live directly north of this residence of the property. Um, I just have concern. The only concern I have, I think, is... Um, property value of, of what's going to happen. We just built a 80-20 North Mount Tabor. We've put our whole life into it. Um, I don't know what a mobile home per se would do with uh, residential pricing in the area. I don't know if it would hurt us or not. Hopefully it wouldn't and they can go ahead with their plan with no problems. I, you know, I don't wish anything on anybody, you know, bad. I just am concerned of that nature. I just want to make that stated. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak against this petition? Seeing none, who has a motion ready for me? I'll be glad to. Okay, thank you, William. Case number 2009-VAR-66 and 2009-VAR-67. Request is for design standards variance, chapter 802, condition 55 shared driveway and design standards variance, chapter 802, condition 55 residential space. I move that we approve both variances based on the findings of fact, the recommendation and conditions set forth by the staff. I second that. Larry, will you please call roll? Uh, yes, uh, the vote is on petition number 
uh, 2009-VAR-66 and 67, uh, the Baker design standards variance from the conditions in regard to detached accessory dwelling units. Uh, the motion is to approve both design standard variances from condition 55, shared driveway and residential space. And uh, based upon the fines of fact and noting that the condition uh, set forth in the staff report has been met uh, based upon the uh, presentation by uh, Ann tonight. Again, the motion, uh, a yes motion is vote to approve. Uh, Margaret Clements? Yes. Bertie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Smarchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Both variances are approved by a 5 0 vote. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Baker. You have a good evening. All right. And last but not least, 2009 CDU 05 Fields Conditional Use. Tammy? Yeah, this is a request for historic adaptive reuse from Chapter 813. Uh, this is uh, an approximately 0 0.2 acre parcel in Perry Township, Section 34, at 6189 South Fairfax Road. It has three zones, uh, zoned SR, it's in the Eco Overlay Area 3, and was recently rezoned to add the HP Overlay to it. So a little background is the petitioners applied for a permit in 2019 to convert an old vacant uh, commercial building into a residence because a residence is a permitted use in the SR zone. Uh, by definition, that means uh, they could turn that into a commercial rental, but it has to be with 30 days or more occupancy, not a short-term rental that is not permitted in this zone. And they basically did an interior remodel of, the, of this um, which did not trigger any design standard variances at the time. Uh, then they applied to rezone um, and added the HP overlay to the property, which activated the historic adaptive reuse conditional use tool. And this will then um, let them make this proposal to do a tourist home or short-term rental with the property. Um, so there are staff concerns over the site limitations, basically um, parking and traffic concerns, septic system capacity and building code. And I will just throw out there that um, the petitioner also has a concurrent petition to do a lot line shift through an administrative type E subdivision. Uh, they just finished a quiet title process, but um, they are requesting a right of way with waiver um, this was per the uh, HP um, Historic Preservation Board, of, board uh, request so that it would protect some of the historic um, items on the property. So again, this is located um, at the intersection of Fairfax and East Sanders Second, uh, kind of in the old town plat of Sanders. Uh, it, and we went over the zoning already. It's one of the historic or the designated communities, um, but really falls within like a rural residential type of, of zoning district when you look at the more specific map. And then this is the approximate um, parcel lines. Like I said, they're in the process of redefining and coming up with a legal description. In fact, that was a condition of their rezone and that will be a condition of this petition as well that they finish that process and have a, a solid recorded legal description when they're done. Um, it, it, is a, it is a pretty tight, small lot. It's 0.224 acres. Previously did not have a septic system on it, uh, but they did add a fin three bed uh, Presby system to the site. Actually, it was technically off site, which is the whole impetus for this lot line shift so that the septic would be on the same lot as um, the old Hayes grocery store. Uh, and they are working through that process still of, of the legal description. You can see the septic system uh, kind of walled off by some limestone blocks to protect anyone from driving over it. Uh, along the northern property line is a gravel drive and that actually is um, an access point to the neighbor to the north 
Um, I think they're trying to work out an easement agreement, but it has not been successful yet. And just kind of taking note of some of the other properties in the vicinity of this property. So um, a tourist home usually has a, has a stipulation that, that the tourist home be 200 feet away from all primary residences. Uh, and that is not the case here. Although the petitioners do own the lot currently that is just directly east. And then the bottom picture there, I just wanted to give an overall picture. Um, part of the reason why they'd like for this uh, tourist home use to be available is because of Whippoorwill Hill Farms, uh, where the Red Star is. Um, they have family members have been acquiring and shifting lot lines up there as well, um, doing quiet title with the rail with the old rail lines that are in there, and um, I think they're they're intending to do a direct path from Whippoorwill Hills to this site um, for uh, you know, guests to be able to use uh, and walk back and forth to. Um, so it's just sort of an offset, like kind of a, it's sort of affiliated with Whippoorwill Hills and is advertised on their website. So these are some of the site photos. Um, they really don't do justice to the work that has actually been put into this uh, property. They have, um, you know, taken old gas pumps and gas tanks out. They're restoring the gas tanks that are going to be relocated here. Um, the interior of this place um, is just gorgeous, really. And there, there are some complications, though. It's a tiny site. So in the bottom picture, you see. Um, we worked with their engineer and were able to put four parking spaces for our definition of chapter 806 parking standards on the east side of the lot. Uh, there will be one other parking space on the west side. Uh, and the septic system, you know, kind of is there along with all the utilities right up next to the building. You'll see in a moment. Next. Uh, this is the northern property line. And again, they, they share this driveway access with the neighbor to the north that does not have an easement quite yet, um, working through that. And then we've got the intersection here at Fairfax and East Saunders Second. Um, we heard a lot from the public about this because when this site was uh, purchased originally, it changed traffic patterns um, because it suddenly was privately owned. The, you know, the owners didn't want people driving through their property. And so uh, worked with the highway department, changed some traffic patterns, did some upgrades to this intersection, added some stop sign features. Um, it's a little more safe, but there is a blind curve, a blind hill down there. It's, it is not the best intersection. And um, there is some issues with, I, I have heard with buses as well. Uh, this is the site plan that was um, worked out with the petitioner's engineer. I just highlighted a few things, um, the Presby system in yellow, the old Hayes grocery store in green there that's been remodeled. Uh, I didn't include the porches, but there's porches off of each, each side. And you can see the um, five parking spaces that we were able to come up with on the site here. Um, oh, sorry, Jackie, could you go back one more, one time there? I just wanna make sure. Okay, and one thing, that, there will be a discussion here about the Presby system. Um, it is a, a FIN system, which is a special built for very restricted lots um, and it's tiny. It's, it's capacity is for two bedrooms, which, class, which basically is about four people. Um, and then we'll also talk about residential code here in a moment. So the petitioner's letter, um, initially they were, they're requesting a tourist home and they are stating there's two bedrooms, two baths within this. Um, and they're also, we're saying that if they could get eight um, parking spaces on here, but by chapter 806 standards, um, we were only able to fit five on here. Um, additionally, just the um, part of the building permit there was on that previous slide with um, demonstrating the bedrooms that they had added. And the building permit on the left here is specifically allowing us to release it because residence is permitted in this SR zone, um, but not short-term rental. But now that they have this 
HP overlay, they were able to now ask for this uh, tourist home use um, with, through the historic adaptive reuse tool. Um, and then the septic permit. So I spoke with the health department on two different occasions. Um, one was just, uh, just a few days ago. I wanted to really confirm things. They pulled the file for me. We went over this. Um, basically it's for two bedrooms and um, there is a thing that says Presby Finn three beds. I clarified that three beds actually means, um, oh, am I gonna forget it? The, the fields that, um, oh, I forgot the word. It's absorption fields, sorry, is basically what that means because I didn't want there to be confusion with this permit here. And we reviewed state code that states that because this is a sized for two bedrooms, it can accommodate 300 gallons of sewage per day. And that is something that um, is a site limitation basically. We also reviewed and did a tourist home analysis. Um, normally tourist homes are on lots that are 2.5 acres in size or larger. Um, this is 0.22 for acre lot. Um, the septic system always has to match uh, the number of bedrooms. And, um, you know, we, we measured some of the distances from the adjacent homes, none of which were, were more than 200 feet. They're all much closer, some as close as uh, 35 feet with that northern home. And then the other thing that we uh, kind of got into was parking. We don't have a maximum parking limitation we do have the minimum parking standard. Um, and then the, the tourist home very distinctly says there's no parking allowed on the street or road uh, for guests. So we wanna try to pull out, you know, what's matching, what's not matching, and then look at this, you know, adaptive reuse that we're trying to do. Um, we staff came across uh, and looked at the Whippoorwill Hill website and did find a link to the Hayes Grocery Store, um, Sanders Store, what they were referring to it as. And here we have another um, conflict with they were advertising six parking spaces. Again, we're only seeing five. Uh, and they were advertising um, seating for 21 people. We also had a testimony where they had 40 guests. And, you know, after talking with the health department, we really think that that is just too much for this site. Um, you have to understand that there are residences completely surrounding the site with a tricky traffic pattern already in place. Um, and so, you know, staff really is taking a lot of these things into consideration. And the fact that this is built to residential code, not commercial code, and they are not going to be required to build to commercial code because they're probably not coming back for any building permit required, you know, any building permits anytime soon. They have done the work already. They have a certificate of occupancy that was issued in 2019. Um, and so, you know, without having sprinkler systems and exit signs and things like that that are more affiliated with, with commercial type structures and buildings, um, it does seem a little bit much to see 21 to 40 people at this property. Next. Um, I did get a remonstrance letter and this actually was distributed this morning. Um, it came in yesterday. The person was very thoughtful with their comments. Uh, they have been following the, this petition site for about a year with the, both the rezone uh, and seeing all the work that was being done on the site there uh, and the disruption, uh, some of that construction was causing for the neighborhood at the time. Um, and then I also received uh, a phone call from another person with concerns about the intensity of the site. And then I also had another phone call from someone with questions and then they were concerned that some of the other people that lived on that road um, would not have access to this meeting um, and be able to speak their voice. So, you know, I tried to communicate the ways as best we could through our, you know, how to attend if, if need be. So staff recommendation for petition 2009-CDU-05. We put a lot of thought into this. Uh, we think this is a pretty good fit. So we are recommending approval 
of the conditional use request for historic adaptive reuse based on the findings of fact with the following seven conditions. Um, all right, so the petitioner must provide a recorded legal description by completing the type E subdivision process and recording the plat prior to changing the use of the property to a tourist home. Uh, the parking of visitors to the tourist home, they must park on site according to the approved site plan. No street parking is allowed. There are only four overnight guests permitted on site with no more than six additional daytime visitors permitted. A lot of this has to do with the septic system and parking restrictions. Uh, the occupancy limits must be posted. The, uh, we would like to see an update to the commercial Sanders store website to reflect the allowed numbers of guests. It also might be wise to put the parking configuration up on there too, though we're not making that a request. Um, we would also, the health department thought this was a good idea was to submit monthly to the planning staff, uh, the Southern Monroe Water District daily water usage reports for the first year of operation to monitor the amount of water being put into the septic system. I did speak with the Southern Monroe Water District. They said, as long as the homeowner makes that request to get those daily water usage reports, it's not a problem. They can pu pull those at any time. Um, and this way we'll just make sure that the capacity of that septic system is not exceeding that 300 gallons per day uh, by having too many people using it. And then finally, uh, condition seven, this may not be used as an event center as, design, as defined by chapter 801. An event center is a building which may include on-site kitchen or catering facilities where indoor and outdoor activities such as weddings, receptions, banquets, corporate events, and other such gatherings are held by appointment. So we are really trying to rein this in and keep this as a tourist home use so as not to disrupt the residential neighborhood around it and also not overly tax the parking, the septic, um, you know, and, and we're working with residential building code here. So I am happy to take any questions. Does the board have any questions for Tammy? I have uh, a question. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna ask you, Tammy, you were mentioning permits. Have they gotten all the permits or are there still permits they still need to get? They will still need to file for a tourist home permit, which includes a site plan, basically. And then they also, because it's zoned with the historic uh, preservation overlay, they will need to submit a certificate of appropriateness application to the HP board. Basically, what we'll be doing is just confirming the site plan, the parking, the landscaping, if, if any is required and just making sure it still fits with the historic character of the area. So would they need our approval tonight to be able to move forward on those permits? Yes. Okay. They, yes, because that use, this is a very specific request to have a, a use that is not normally permitted in this zone. Bernie, you had a question? I'll, I'll wait, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just wait until after the petitioners present. Anyone else have any questions for Tammy? Are the petitioners here? I see L Fields one. I'm assuming that might be someone. Um, you're on mute. If you'd like to speak, feel free to unmute. Laura? Did you want to speak, Ms. Field, Mrs. Fields? Maybe we can come back to her. Okay. All right. No, nope. here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Okay, there we are. All right. I'm, I'm present. This is Kay Fields. Okay. Uh, I assume you wish to speak. Do you? I do. Please. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do indeed. State your name, please. Kay Fields. Okay, uh, go ahead, Ms. Fields. Uh, you guys have done a great job in this meeting, number one, and I think we're the last ones, so here we go. Um, 
happy to report that we're really moving all along with the type E subdivision, as Tammy said. I think she and um, Jay Floyd from Bynum Fanyo are coming together on agreement on legal description, and then we should be able to get it um, official. I don't know exactly what that process is, but we'll get that done. We would like to request an increase for the number of overnight guests to seven people. I understand that the uh, septic is the, is the concern. We had no indication that the number of guests would be limited to four until we got this report for the zoning committee. Randy Rains, the Monroe County Sanitarian, is actually the gentleman who approved the septic and was actually on site when it was put in. And we've spoken with him as kind of, kind of a counterpoint to what Tammy has said tonight. And he believes that it is set up for a three bedroom, two bath scenario. Um, unfortunately, Randy is on vacation until tomorrow but he said he would be happy to write a letter to the zoning board to explain his, his views on that. The usage of the Sanders store will really be primarily on the weekends, which we believe will reduce the amount of waste into the septic system by half. This will not be a facility that is used um, seven days a week by any means. We're happy to do the water usage study, but we believe that it will support the view of having uh, the maximum number of guests at the store of seven. Our second request tonight is concerning parking. Um, we've been allowed five parking places. We would like to be considered for the possibility of six parking places. The east side of the property is not the problem. It's the west side of the property. Um, that area we've done some changes that the highway department requested that included eliminating the driveway that went on to Sanders second and also removing blacktop that was along Fairfax. We put in dirt and grass, but there's still a large gravel area there that has always been this store's parking lot. I'm thinking that perhaps we could do linear parking. Tammy has explained to me that you can't put them because some of that parking lot is not on our deeded property, uh, but it's there and I'm hoping that we could use it. If we can't use it side by side, north south parking, I'm wondering if we can do linear where one is in front of the other. Um, lastly, I wanna address briefly and I'll be happy to answer any questions the planning department's concerns. We certainly will update the website you need to understand that we've been paying a big mortgage on this project for over a year now. And I know that's not your concern, but it certainly is our family financial concern, not been able to um, you know, bring our business plan to fruition. So the, adver the advertising on the Whippoorwill Hill website was merely to kind of stimulate interest. Um, and that will of course be updated when we know exactly what the, the guidelines are. Lastly, we do believe that this falls into the Monroe County Comprehensive Plan. The Sanders store is not <clears throat> in that direct plan for Smithville and Strain Ridge area, but it certainly is close. Um, it is a renewed historic building, which we believe is the anchor to the Sanders community and will certainly bring new people and their money to the Bloomington area. So. Let me know if you have any questions. Do any of the board members have questions for the petitioner? I'd like to um, quickly address Tammy. I'm sure you covered this too, but the parking request would be dealt with at the site plan stage and it's more of a zoning concern right. outside the, of the conditional use. Yes, and the way we worded that condition that the parking of visitors has to just meet that parking approved parking plan. So we could probably work with that design, see if something works. Thank you. So with the, so with the seven visitors, uh, 
again, the, the bigger concern there is because of the, the Presby. And if, if seven visitors is overnight visitors is too much, it's just going to cause the Presby to fail. And then that's going to be a detriment to the landowner. So I would suggest that if, if they've got professional expertise, that says to the health department or otherwise, it says that that system will handle it. I personally don't have a problem with seven overnight visitors. I don't either, Bernie. This is Margaret. I, I feel that um, that they've done their homework. They've sought the expertise. They have a valid business plan. Um, and actually, the business plan probably demands uh, this level of uh, accommodating guests. And it does make use of an is and reuse of a, an historic structure. So I feel that I, I was out there today just looking at um, at the driving and uh, the parking. And um, I feel as though uh, that it, it's a very viable project. And that um, as far as the highway is concerned there, um, it's very similar to all aspects of the road because that's just the topography of um, Monroe County in the Sanders and uh, area. So I feel as though um, certainly the level of car activity would not exceed what took place when it was a commercial business. So anyway, those are my initial thoughts on that. Ms. Fields, are there outside are there uh, bibs on the out outside hose bibs on the on the structure? Um, there, it's not on the structure, but it there's so there's that little garden area that actually covers the water meter and the tank, uh -huh. the septic on the east side of the building. And there's a ho yeah, there's a ho hose bib right there. You might you might because that water won't go in your in your presby, so you might want to be aware that if you're using that a lot in your in your the limits that oh. you should discuss with the health department start to oh. reach. You might want to you might want to make sure you kind of have a way to meter that or something. Okay, thank you. Good point. Just a suggestion. Yes, sir. Okay, any other questions from the board for the petitioner? Okay, don't see any. Thank you. And is there anyone here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? I would like to speak on behalf of the petition. Yes, on behalf of the petition. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, please state your name. Danielle Bichant Bell, and okay. I'm chair of the Monroe County Historic Preservation Board of Review. So I'm just wanting to, um, on behalf of the board, just to add our support of this project. Obviously the fields have put a tremendous amount of work into this and they're willing to do whatever they need to do to make it happen. So um, we just want to give our continued support from the board um, for this project to move forward. Honestly, what else would happen with this little, this little building um, if they weren't doing something like this? So any reuse is going to have issues positive, negative. Um, so that's, it's a wonderful thing to see it um, being reused in some way. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. You have a good evening. You too. Anyone else here you wish to speak on behalf of this petition? See anyone? Anyone here wish to speak against this petition? Anyone? Not seeing anyone, I would entertain an emotion, please. I can do this. Case number 2009-CDU-05. This is the field's conditional use at 6189 South Fairfax Road. Uh, the request is a conditional use of a historic adaptive reuse. I move that we approve the petition based on the findings of fact and the staff report recommendations 
found therein and with the following conditions. And I'm going to read them. Uh, <clears throat> one, the petitioner must provide a rec recorded legal description by completing the type E administrative subdivision process and recording the, the administrative plat prior to changing the use of the property as a tourist home. Two, parking of visitors to the tourist home must park on the site according to an approved site plan. No street parking is allowed, which I think would, as Jackie said, I don't think that that restricts them from doing what they think that they can do with this, with the additional spaces. Three, seven overnight guests are permitted on the site with the same number permitted. Re does that, I'm gonna back up here. Is that saying that there are four overnight guests with a total of 10 with daytime Eight. visitors yes. included? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So number three, only seven overnight guests are permitted on site with no more than six additional daytime visitors permitted. Lucky number 13. Four occupancy permits must be posted. Five, update the commercial Sanders store website to reflect the allowed number of guests. Six, submit to submit monthly to the planning staff the Southern Mineral Water District daily water usage reports for the first year of operation to monitor the amount of water being put into the septic system. Seven, the site may not be used as an event center as defined by chapter 801 and the text of an event center is in the, uh, in the report. And I'll add a condition that the petitioner receive a letter from Randy Rains stating that the Presby as permitted will satisfy the, their needs on the property. I second the motion. Larry, will you please call roll? Uh, yes. Uh, the motion is on petition 2009-CDU-05, uh, fields conditional use variance for historic adaptive reuse uh, as provided by chapter 813. Uh, the motion is to approve based upon the conditions submitted with the following additions or amendments that uh, under condition three, instead of four overnight guests, seven overnight guests be permitted uh, with no more than six additional daytime visitors. And with the addition of a new condition eight, that a letter be submitted from Randall, Randy Reigns, County Sanitarian, uh, approving the occupancy uh, that is set forth by the variance approval. Again, a motion to uh, approve his motion to grant the conditional use with the uh, conditions set forth in the motion. Uh, I, I just have a question, uh, Larry uh, um, and Bernie. Did you not, Bernie, say that uh, there should be allowed seven additional daytime visitors? No, I left it. At, I left it at six. I didn't hear the petitioners state that they wanted to change that, so I left it the way the okay. recommended motion was. Okay. If I missed something, I can I can re I can address I can readdress that, but I didn't hear anything different. Uh, we would certainly take seven, but we're happy with six. As long, I mean, we're thrilled with the seven overnight guests. I'm just thinking, uh, you know. I would move that to seven additional daytime guests, but that would be a friendly amendment. If, I, I, um, accept, Bernie... I accept that friendly amendment. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, again, the vote motion is on addition 2009 CDU-05, uh, subject to the previous conditions I set forth with the addition that uh, under three, seven overnight guests and seven daytime additional guests be allowed. 
Uh, again, a motion favors vote to approve the uh, conditional use with the conditions. Uh, Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Yeah. Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Maria, Mary Beth Kuthmarczyk? Yes. Okay, the conditional use is approved five to zero. Thank you so very much. Uh, Thank you. Bill, you Thank you. A nice, evening. nice job. Thank you, everybody. And I'd really like seeing that place down there. Okay. Just, Good. just a quick, just a quick announcement. Uh, and Dave can chime in on this, but it, it may be that we have to have a in-person meeting in November, uh, depending on the governor's orders. So we will let you know in advance on that, and see what options are available. If that is the case, I cannot make a 5.30 meeting. It would have to be moved to 6. Okay. I'm already having to take off a half hour early to make the meeting as it is. So. Okay. Okay. I'm working on South Dakota time. So. Looking forward to being with all you folks in person. Masked and socially distanced. Okay. So I see. Hey, Bernie. I'm yes. gonna bring some plex I'm gonna bring plexiglass to put around you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it won't I cover my face, Larry. I don't know what tonight. your problem is. Any reports tonight? <laughs> well, that's all I have. <laughs> Larry uh Dave, you have anything? Nope. Okay. No, no report. Uh I move that we adjourn this meeting. Yay. Okay. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, everyone. Thank all right. you. Have a good evening. Live long and prosper, Bye. October 24th. Captain Janeway and I'm there. <laughs>